when last we left our heroes. Yes. Hello. That's that normally me, isn't it? I mean, that's a bit oh, traditional. Oh, heck, I forgot about this. Oh, no. <laughs> what happened? Well, we started by asking the arm, <laughs> the remainer, all about the orbs. And we got lots of information, <laughs> which I can't, definitely can't break down. Well, I oh, guess yeah. we know that we can, I guess we can travel to and from dusk with the orb. And it sounded like we could make bridges to other worlds or something. And we could talk to other people that have other midnight stones around. And there are seven or eight of them, I think. And we were thinking to ourselves, well, maybe we can get the humans through using these. And we kind of came up with all these ideas of how we could use it. And then Zoga's like, wait a minute. And we're like, what? And he goes, well, why don't we go and get old uh, blood drinker, <clears throat> what's his face, and the rest of his crew, because they're split up, because the rest of them are stuck in, uh, stuck in a tower. And we're like, yep. That's a mighty fine idea. So, uh, we see them kind of coming down, uh, fording a river, and we get this brilliant plan <coughs> that we will go either... We're still invisible, by the way. We'll go either side of the clearly marked crossing log, <laughs> which you would definitely take rather than fording the river again. I'm not bitter about that. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so we, we, you we just you would side. just watch them ford a river. I kind of still, still moan about that. But anyway, <laughs> um, so half of us go one side, half of us go the other. Well, there's five of us, so there's three on one and two on the other. And we're like, yes, this is a great plan. We're invisible when they cross. We could jump her. We could take them at one at a time. Brilliant. And of course, they start falling the river. Uh, at which I think at that point, Co's just like, rah! <laughs> and it just kind of gets stuck in. Um, so we all get stuck in and um, we fight and it goes pretty well. Um, I don't think anyone was went down. The plan. Yeah, I don't think anyone went down. We just, we. We uh, crushed them. Got, yeah, we kind of took the spellcaster <laughs> kind of out of the game a little bit. By the way, they did we, we kind smash of those guys? Flank, flanked them. We're it in was in, invisible. Really satisfying. It they had no out, chance. It worked out really well. Uh, so yeah, we killed them all. Hurrah! And I think just before old blood drinker uh, popped his clogs, he shouted something popped along the clogs. lines of uh, "died." Um, Something like she, she who's above us all will kill you all. Something oh, like that's, that. That's, I think that's 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 really close. Yeah, that's good. I think that's, some, I'd forgotten about that. Damn, yeah, you got like, a memory. Literally on his death, and then that was it. Right then we're like, right, okay, we're good. We've done this bit. We're pleased with ourselves. We kind of chat Ooh. a bit more. We chat what? More amongst we ourselves. did what now? <laughs> we ple We were pleased with ourselves. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> We pleasure ourselves. And wow. We're like, right, let's go back to. The we had a good time. It was, but it wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everything will be better. Uh, and then on our way back to the humans, uh, Colville does an orcs attack on us. But instead of orcs attack, he's using. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Colville does an orcs attack on us. <laughs> <laughs> he's using gnolls. Uh, Love it. One of them who is disguised. Uh, no, he's not. No, that, that's where that's where it is. I think four four gunnels. Yeah, there we go. Are uh, about to attack us. I don't know if we rolled initiative or not, but yeah, here we are. You I did roll. That's, you you that did was roll what initiative. We did last week. Correct. You did roll initiative. Well done. And did uh, we? okay. It, well, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you're all in the tracker. Oh, did we? You're all in the. Tra I can. I can. Here, I, mm. I, I, I can. Um, what I can do? Oh, is, we, I mean, we are in the tracker. I, I can. Oh, I can yeah. reset. The, 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 is, are we still in the tracker from the previous combat? The, listen, I think that's what it is. I, I'm not. A, I'm, I'm not. A, uh, I'm not a scientist. We do need to reroll because my in that ca that combat, my initiative was shit. Here, the one I uh, <laughs> hang on. A second. Uh, and therefore, I think you guys and get a short and rest therefore. there. So some of your all your encounter powers are going to reset. Um, so, Ooh, yay. <laughs> so can I? Right. Uh, there we go. Zoga, oh. excellent. 
Oh, that well, hurts. Alice, ooh, cut Why through. did we reroll? Yes. I was a 20. <laughs> oh, I was a 20 my. before this. We shouldn't have re-rolled. This is Carla. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to leave. <laughs> I didn't want to is... rush in and do something. <laughs> When? We deserve this. Oh we my god. <laughs> we deserve this. This is. No! Give me back the old one. <laughs> I was mistaken. We definitely rolled. We misremembered. Um... Uh, Zoga, Zoga, I would like to remind you of your new skill tactics. Uh, please do. Uh, it's written on your character sheet somewhere, I think. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, right. Yes, it is. It's in my notes. Yeah. There we go. After initiative is rolled, choose two allies and swap their place. Ooh, this is new. As a minor, oh no, this isn't new. There was just another part of it that I, I actually don't. Well, this is new to me. But I think this is the first time I'm seeing this. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. It's it's new. Wait, it's not new. I've just never seen it before. Well, then how do you know it's not new? <laughs> ah shit! <laughs> you got me there, dude. Uh, let me see. Choose two allies and swap their. In, I should say in the initiative order. <gasps> oh, ooh, but that makes sense. I yeah, it it's, not a, it's not a it's not a. We're eleven. It's not a ends, psychic ability. No, it's more like a commander kind of like. Right. Yeah, didn't did King have something like that? Choose an enemy, make Maybe. a tactics That's check. True. If successful, you learn what the enemy will do on their next turn. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. That is the commander trick. That is the commander thing. Right. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I thought Baker. So. That must have been. It's almost like I'm the commander. <laughs> <laughs> that, obviously, that was. <laughs> obviously, that was really good design because I'm reusing it. Yeah. This just makes me think some you sort pulled of... it from 4E and it already existed. Well, I mean, actually, a lot of, um, I, I, I didn't mean to make any kind of like, um, like if you watch, if you watch the running the game videos, like a lot of the titles stuff nope. that the chain has. Yeah, I know a lot of the, um, a lot of that extracurricular stuff that I introduced to the game, like your titles and stuff like that literally, literally is from fourth edition because fifth Can edition I... is boring. <laughs> it doesn't right. have, doesn't have cool shit like this. Like Leech's I... Leech's ability is a straight up warlord power. Mm. Uh, the one where I can like jump yep. in battle and revive someone. You can yeah, run. Up, you can see somebody. Somebody drops in battle, and you can run up to them, and you heal yeah. them ba- for a number of dice equal to the number of enemies that you run past. So the the more heroic you are, the more healing they get, which I think is fucking cool as shit. Anyway, Sarvanazor, go. Two allies. So I. I, I can't swap myself and someone else. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you can swap yourself and somebody else. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to swap myself with. Um, I want to swap myself with Orin. Then. Okay. So Orin, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah. Yes. I guess it doesn't matter because your other ability kind of benefits from you going early, right? Being able to pick one of these guys that haven't acted yet, but there's always their next turn, right? So you're that it always works. Uh, right. So you become an eight. No. What? Well, yeah. And Orin becomes a uh, uh, 19. 19. There we go. Survival. Yay! Cool. Oh god, what am I gonna do? If I, uh... So, if I get myself in here, bang, and then use Great Cleave... Just be aware that, that that would provoke an attack of opportunity. Ooh, would it? Well, because when you when you enter this square, you enter uh-huh. you enter these two guys I don't know if you can see me clicking on them you enter these two yeah. guys threatened area right and then you so you can't you can't move from here to here and ignore them right they get a, oh, they would get a free attack on you so I could move where you just put me and be okay you can move you can absolutely move there if you want yeah you can you can absolutely move here it just means these two guys get a free attack on you that's all uh, but if I do move there and take the three attacks, I can hit all three. It's only two. Uh, sorry, two attacks. I yep. can hit all three of them at the same time. I think yep, each enemy in burst, you can see. Yep. Uh, attack for you, dude. Yeah, you'll be fine. Sod it. Yep, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Rah! Okay. Well, before you Sorry. get there, this dude uh, oh. spears you. How cruel. Uh, that's a hit. Uh, and then um, this dude spe- uh, is going to claw you. It looks like this is a guy's a claw fighter, and this guy's claws he has like Wolverine claws strapped to the back of his uh, thing. Uh huh. 
The Knoll Claw Fighter deals an extra five damage on melee attacks against an enemy that has two or more of the Knoll Claw Fighter's allies adjacent to it. <gasps> as as he does right now. Let's hope he hits. Claw. What? Miss, miss, miss. No, nope, hits. You'll be fine. And Ooh, it's yes. um. <laughs> Dead. And it's a D6 <laughs> plus four, max damage, yes. and an extra uh -huh. and an extra yep. five damage. Ugh. Oh yeah. Uh. There you go. So yeah, you guys watch Sir Vanazor plunge bravely into this thicket, and immediately upon entering, you hear the clash of arms, and you see like um, sparks flying, and actually little gouts, little like gouts He's of blood fine. start flying out of Sir Vanazor's. Am I am I blooded, or just? No, you're fine. Not yet. You just took 19. No, you took 19 fine. damage out of 49. So you're. I mean, okay. you, it would be better if you didn't take that damage. But you're not like you're not bloody. All right, cool. So I think I need to target all three of these now. One, two, three. Yep. And then back to my. Why have I forgotten? Great cleave. Yes. Here we go. Wow. Looks like I hit with two. Yeah. The yep. I missed. Claw fighter two, yeah. you missed. And it, but it'll damage. automatically it'll automatically deselect that guy, so you can roll damage. Right. I just roll my damage. Yep. Now. Average average damage. Not bad. Not a bad uh, little opener. Uh. Just wounded. Okay. Oh, I've used my action point already. Really? Well, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, I, almost oh, all of because, us did the last yeah, 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 fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The last fight, yeah, and yeah. we haven't well, rested since. You took it. So uh, that would be. You only point. get your action. Resting doesn't get you an action point back. Um, That's right. It's every other encounter. So you got after the at right. the end of this yeah, encounter, you'll get another action point you can use. Yeah, because this will be the second. So I, uh, today. I moved it on to Oren. So, yeah, I'm just taking a look to see. Here, real quick. Because I believe I'm gonna have to run up as well. You're currently in a weird spot because you're getting flanked, which is not very good. Rah. <laughs> um. But well, I guess uh, you can move through allies, right? Yep, absolutely. Uh, you All can right, move in that case. Allies, right? Yep, absolutely. Usually. Um, and I am going to. I am going to. You gain a bonus to the attack roll equal to one half your strength. Model one half your strength. Strength is AC, blah blah blah. Hit palm plus strength. Um, okay. I wonder if I should use this now or say. I'm just gonna use like a cleave, I think. So I'm gonna use the cleave on. <coughs> Excuse me. COVID. Do you guys think I should cleave the one that's already wounded? Or the other... Oh, wait. No, they're both wounded. You go for the Marauder and mark him. Okay. Get up there and we can do the old shake and bake. That sounds great. Okay. Old shake and bite. The old shake and bake. Wounded. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Hit. Good. This is with. Okay, I use sleeve. Okay, just to make sure. Using rending battle axe plus one. Uh, rend it. Uh. Ooh, average damage. <laughs> and then I also do. Claw Fighter 2 gets a little damage as well because I'm using cleave. Sweet. Sweet. All right, and I think I need to mark. Now I can only mark one, right? Correct. You can only have one mark up at a time. Okay, cool. I'll just do the Marauder real quick then. Okay, that's the end of my turn. Sweet. What's this guy going to do? What's your story, blood caller? Let's see. So that's this dude. Oh, his, his, he's got, wow. One, two, hmm. That's interesting. I guess this guy is just going to target Servanazar. Mm. 
And he's just gonna claw him. Yeah. Hits. Uh -huh. You're bloodied. That's okay. this dude. He marks you. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. What? Why oh, is my it? gosh. Oh, dear. I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm bloodied. Okay, that means something. But not yet, I don't think. Well, bloody is that you are now under 50% of your HP. Yeah, I guess. It's just, it's I've got a new feat thing, so uh, Dragon Ball Frenzy. When you're bloodied, I gain a plus two bonus to damage roll, so it doesn't matter until I attack again. This is cool. So this guy is gonna... No. So coming, charging out of this little thicket of trees comes the Noel Claw Fighter. Ugh. And he he's loping toward you like he's he's almost as big as Ko, but he's hunched over and running really close to the ground. And he's got those he's got these dual. Um, not only does he have these heavy claws, but he has wrapped around his um, wrapped around his hands are these metal like Wolverine style claw attachments that he occasionally uses to help him run. And um, he has clawing charge. He makes two claw attacks against a single target when he charges. <clears throat> so this guy gets gets a plus one. And uh, he leaps toward the end and claws Ko twice. Uh, that is a miss. Fuck off. But he gets another one. <laughs> oh, he tries to... That one hits. Yeah. Uh, claws once. There we go. That's claw fighter number one. Mm. Uh, claw fighter number two is happy to um, just take on Cervanazor. And uh, he's going to do. Miss. Yep, he's going to hit. Ugh. He's going to hit. That's it. Yeah, well, it's only it's only D6 plus four. Like, it's not that's not a lot of damage in the grand scheme of things. It's the fact that you're surrounded by them and you keep taking this extra five points of damage that's going to kill you. You are now at 44 hit points out of 49. You have five hit points left. Uh, Fine. Lavellus, it's you. Roar. <laughs> <laughs> Roar. <laughs> you hear the barking, the, the celebratory barking of these hyena demons from the thicket, Lavellus. As though they're celebrating some sort of victory. Almost like the way you would imagine a bunch of half-demonic dogmen would celebrate the death of the upcoming death of a famed dragonborn knight. That sounds exactly like that. It's not a good sound. <laughs> Oh, cool. I see Lavelle is targeting people. I like I like the fact, well, among the few things I like about the software is I just mouse over Lavelle and these red arrows are projecting out at all the villains that she's trying to target. Oh, uh, no. I wonder if Here we go. 16, five. 6, and 6. Miss, miss, hit. Man. Man, it would have been nice if those two misses had hit. Dernwin's Guidance. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a re-roll, maybe? Oh, Dale's muted. I was like... I was yeah, like, why isn't Dale is talking? <laughs> oh, I was like, Dale. I can't hear anything cool she's saying. No, I mean, no, I no, guess... No, wait. How, come, why, why, how come we don't get to talk? Maybe because of Twitch chat or something. That's annoying. Whatever. That's fine. Dale, are you there? People don't want to talk. I, that's fine. Hello! I've been uh -huh. talking to you this whole time. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh man. We don't talk. I can't believe I've been I've been answering everything that you've said, and then it for a while it sounded like you were replying to me. So I just and then you said I was muted. I was like, well, I'm glad that's fixed. <laughs> oh my god! So that's not even. <laughs> what did you just do, Lavellus? What What did I just do? Uh, we um, just saw a bunch of die I... rolls and stuff, and I don't know what powers you're using. Um, I, I looked at this big knoll that uh, came very close to mostly Cove, but I was there too. And I went, whoa, and I stepped back a bit. 
Um, and then I futzed over who I was going to target for a while, um, summoning the Thunder of the Summer King. Uh, and uh, I missed two of them, which I didn't like, but that's okay because I had Derwin's Guidance and I used it to reroll an attack on this fella down on, on the bottom just below Vanazor here. Um, yes. That's what I did. And that's now. But now what did you, is it just is it just damage or is it a debuff or? Um, I am I am reading that right now. Oh, okay. I know I Fair should enough. read my stuff beforehand. Oh, I mean, yeah. But I just need to I just need to figure out which. Okay, so it's this one. But I get to. <laughs> but I targeted three of them. Yes. Okay. So so. Eh, eh, eh. Okay. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Damage. Wow. Nice. The only it's time I have weird. ever rolled good damage. And also, uh, they are dazed, and also they get pushed three squares? Three squares. That's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so both of those get pushed three squares. Okay, both of... Wait, I'm sorry. Oops. Which... which uh, so actually, the one attacking this guy Co? gets pushed. One, two... Oh, thank you. Three. Three, sorry. Yeah. And uh, um, this guy gets and- pushed... I guess yeah. like one, two, three. That's cool. Dope. And that's Martin. Could we have not pushed the bottom one? Is that possible? Do we get to choose or just happen? <laughs> I don't get to choose, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. That's okay. Co, it's you. I think we can still. We still got some stuff here. Sorry. Brief adjustment here. You can hear me, right? <laughs> Brief adjustment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just gotta make sure I know the range on this. Okay, it's a close burst one. That means all the squares around you. Yeah. I'm sorry that I I pushed that guy. Don't be don't be sorry. <laughs> you did nothing wrong. I was concerned about um flanking. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I I think I need to jump. <laughs> um, it's been a while so since I'm we going to jump. Yeah, it's been a little while. So I'm going to start by doing my stones endurance minor action. Uh, so I'm I'm Ruby Co. Cool. Woo! Uh, and mm. now I'm going to do my my Seamorg's wings. Uh, so I'm going to do this. I have advantage. I guess I don't know if advantage is a thing. I can't remember. It's plus two. Um, it is. Combat advantage exists. It just means plus two. Twice. So there's the first roll. Good thing I get to do this twice, right? That's a good thing. Look at it again because I haven't developed a system for that. Oh, that is not great. Yeah, but it is 22. <laughs> I think that only gets me four, four squares of movement, my friends. Uh oh. This is, this has no changed way. things. That's the weakest jump I've ever done. Redo. It's not possible for Ko to jump so what? shortly. <coughs> yeah. I'm gonna, it defies I'm gonna, logic. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna cast Durnwind's guidance. <laughs> No, okay, I think, I'm sorry, that doesn't let me Dead get over there. guides because... all of us. Really? I'm going to yes. guidance. <laughs> so I don't think that that lets me get over there, so I'm sorry, that does throw a wrench in the plans. Y'all are on your own over there. I have to pursue uh, this knoll. I, technically, I guess, into the knoll, right? One, two, three. We're like out in a grassy space. Sure, yeah, the grass, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Grassy knoll. Fighting knolls and knolls. Knolls yeah. on knolls on knolls. And then I'm going to open the gates of battle. Open the gates oh, of battle. Yes. Open them up. I That's open. why I switched the initiative order because, like, how am I going to do battle if the gates are closed? You know. Yeah. Good point. Right. Good point. It's eight My chakras. Eight. Yes. His chakras are mine. Ooh. Automatic miss. Ooh. Fucking awesome. Ooh. Well, uh, you know, sometimes it sucks to suck, my friends. <laughs> you're just you're just warming up. You're just, you're just, it's gonna take Justice you. Justice so rarely rolls low. I know it's this bodes. And now I'm getting flashbacks to the tower. This bodes. Remember when oh. I died? <laughs> Look, a lot of things bode. Oh my god. Hey, I'm all ruby though. Only one I'll be person okay. dying here. Yeah, I really don't, don't like it. <laughs> me, surely. Yeah, this is pretty bodey for sure. <laughs> Got some bode vibes. 
<laughs> um, let's see. He's gonna miss. You know, I mean, he's... if we survived all this hobgoblin equinox bullshit just to die from a small pack of hyena folk. I mean, these these guys are badass. Knolls are. Knolls are. I love no I love knolls. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying, are they blood skulls? They are not. Knolls have never been and will never be again as as cool in D and D as they are in fourth edition. They're really cool bad guys. I think. Um, so I guess you know, yeah, you might as well. He's got. He can. He like. He smells blood. He smells. He smells Cervantesor's blood. He can't fucking resist it. Dude, dude, dude. Give him some combat advantage from flanking. Plus two. And, uh... I thought it was the Null Marauder's turn. It is. Isn't that guy a claw guy? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. that's a claw guy. Control it's Z. just that they have names on them, and, and his seems to say Null Claw Fighter. Null, Null Marauder. <laughs> This guy, wait. Good catch. Oh, oh sorry. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, it's this dude. Hi. I mean, maybe it wasn't a good catch. Maybe it's much worse if the marauder. You've already got. Well, it's the same. No, I'm sorry. No, no. It was. Um, I was looking at the right character sheet, uh, but I was moving the wrong token, so it's still the same. <sighs> this guy's actually. Uh, yeah, this guy doesn't have. Yeah, when a null marauder hits Cervanazor. Cool. Ooh, oh my god. Yeah, we gotta do that. Alright. Ha He attacks you with a spear. He crits you. You got about you're about to have a bad oh. Day. Oh. oh dude. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 who no, no. sorry, who which one attacked him? The Marauder? Um Yes. Yeah. It's it's I gotta interrupt. It's this dude. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta interrupt. He's, he's marked. marked. Oh. And he's also adjacent. He is to marked, me. that's true. That's true. Yes. He also yeah, he, is it, an, does, it does it does it interrupt too. or is it just a reaction? It's to interrupt. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah, is it? In combat, yeah. it's to ignore a fighter. Every time you attack an enemy, whether the attack hits or misses, you can choose to mark the target, which I did. Last until the end of my next turn. Hasn't got there yet. You take a, nine, a minus two penalty to attack rolls. That doesn't include me as a target. Oh. Um, yeah, look at that mark, a, minus two. Yeah, you're right. In addition, Wouldn't have mattered. whenever an enemy marked by you is mm -hmm. adjacent to you mm -hmm. and shifts or makes an attack that does not include you, mm -hmm. you can make a melee basic attack against that enemy as an immediate interrupt. Ooh, it's, that's a hot. Immediate interrupts are mm -hmm. tight. Mm -hmm. Immediate interrupts are tight. Immediately <laughs> interrupted. I've been watching a lot of Ryan George Dude. for some reason. I really <laughs> so like that good. guy. I, I really like tell. that guy. <laughs> <laughs> like I've watched enough of them that I know I know exactly what it's going to be yeah. for like the movie you know yeah, but yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. just it's just I don't know it's, it's still, still fun, fun. It's I like fun. I watch his regular funny videos the ones that don't have anything to do with movies so I think they're I think they're awesome it'd be super easy barely barely in, I actually bought a shirt I have a shirt a super easy barely an inconvenient shirt <laughs> that's awesome support your local YouTuber so what are you going to do Oren I guess you're going to okay I'm going to yeah. do a melee basic support your local YouTuber interrupt. whack I mean, this is what nice. factory .com. Unless you're gonna do a Where shitload of damage, it's face. it's still gonna minimum damage. Woo. What? Ow. My dice broke. Did you see that? Ow. Sorry, I still Ouch. have the. <laughs> I have the players only roll ones. I'm taking psychic damage. <laughs> uh, option. Uh, okay, so this Null Marauder is about to kill Cervanazor. No, it just 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 for all the bad rolls. <laughs> emotional. Yeah. Damage. Yeah. It's emotional damage. Muted now oh, too. Emotional damage. He's muted so we can't hear his maniacal laughter. Yep. Cervanazor <laughs> drops. Uh, Zoga. <laughs> you hear the you hear the high. I don't know whether he knows that he's muted. <laughs> am I? Am I muted? I am muted. I've been there. How? What did I do? <laughs> I, was, I pressed a button. What? Sorry. Yeah, Cervanazor. Uh, Cervanazor is dying. So uh, um, the, and you hear the you hear the hyenas in the thicket cheering, and you know they just killed. As far as they know, he looks he looks dead. Um, they just killed look, a dragon. This isn't a, about him right now. Knight. It's my turn. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Those are the worst because they fucking laugh at you. Yeah, I'm not laughing. Like kookaburras. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I thought what you did. I thought your suicidal sacrifice OD was very brave. So yeah, charging yeah, into them, having them surround you. 
right? N- you know, just scared. completely we'd by just yourself. Be, just, no allies we'd in sight. We just be blood drinker, whatever his name is. We're in for enough, forgotten. Yeah. So we're, I'm on top of the world. I'm, nothing could defeat me. I was just going to charge in there and smash them up. Unfortunately, yeah. it didn't quite work how I was predicting. Uh, all right, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna run up here, get in the face of this Noel Marauder. Uh, as a minor action, I'm going to inspiring word, Sir Vanazor. I'm going to look at him and say, you're fine. That's nice. Look at that. Wow. Like, you're fine. <laughs> you're, you're fine. <laughs> I love fine. that. Oh, ugh, ugh. But, you know. Get That's, up, you win. There was a you're great... Um, Vanazor's just been watching too much football. When 4th edition first came out, there was a great summary of all the different classes and um, for people that hadn't bought the game yet. And one of them was the Warlord, the Zoga character. And it was like, it, he's the shouty man. And he just he shouts at people and heals them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Alright, and then I'm going to uh, draw my sword and wave it around and taunt <laughs> this guy. <laughs> uh, s- it'd be nice if I mean, it'd be nice if there was a button so for zoom in on what? the map. Zoom. I wish it was like a zoom extends, where it would zoom in so that all the heroes are in the shot. There might be actually. No, there isn't. So I have, uh, I have attacked him. I have assaulted him brashly. Brash assault. Uh, Does that that gives him a, that gives him a free attack on you, right? That gives him a free attack. A oh, free he's base gonna, attack. He's gonna fucking take it. Well, first with, you you do damage the, to him. You hit him. Damage. Yeah, you hit him. So you do damage to him first. Damage, bam! Awesome. He's bloodied, and you see, he kind of, he kind of goes into a frenzy. Like he's now, it's he's gone up, kind of a little bit, a little bit crazy, a little bit more savage uh-huh. now that he's bloodied. Oh, yeah. So he's definitely cool. gonna. He's Is definitely, he gonna make an attack against me? Yeah. He on. Oh, so here's the well. thing. Yeah. He he marked. So. Uh, oh, I know. Uh, I yeah. Know. Do I get to do it again? Yep, you get to do it again. As yes. An the yes. All right. Still targeted. Have y'all ever had shake and bake? Oh, uh, when I was a little kid, I think yeah. I don't. Just I don't know. Like, oh, yes. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, that's yeah, the kind buddy. of thing we need. That's right. It doesn't. It it no. It knows you crit. You can just roll damage, and it will. It will. It will do it for you. Oh, sweet. So you see the D10 is maxed. It did 10. Yeah. So even though you didn't roll a 10, it fixed that and said, nope, you critted. And then I believe you've got a, a weapon that gives you an extra die when you crit. That's what focus yeah. crit means. So you, it rolled the extra die for oh. you. So it maxed out It maxed out your damage die for 10. It rolled your extra. I have a magic weapon that does a D6 when I crit. And it's fuck. That's Jesus. awesome. I mean, yeah, it is. This thing is closer to death than Sir Vanazor was before it's before they finished him up. This thing is not looking good. New HP. Speaking of, speaking of, uh, since you're making an attack against me, uh, a- an ally of my choice within five squares can make a basic attack against the target and has combat advantage for that attack. What's what? What? what that sounds like bullshit. What's that? That's brash assault. <laughs> brash assault. Yeah, isn't that? I thought. Oh, Brad, uh, Orin, Orin got her free attack because of her mark from being marked. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And now, now Brash Assault lets lets her do it again. The old bold and brash. Oh, oh do I'm, you want? Although I'm gonna let Vanazor do this one. Yeah. Oh. Well, okay. He'll be, he'll he'll be doing it from a recumbent position. Was he laying down? He's prone. Yeah. yeah. He, he he collapsed. He was unconscious. What? Uh. Yeah, but I mean, he hasn't he hasn't got an action yet. He hasn't had time to stand up, so he's just laying on his ass. Except his eyes are open now, (laughs) and they weren't a minute ago. Yeah. Well, yeah, I I don't know. I feel like it like it's narratively cooler if it's Savannazor. I agree. Sure. Yeah. You know, we're all we're all we're all a team here. Yeah. What what happens here? Sorry. So make a make a basic attack against Uh this Null Marauder, and you have combat advantage. You have plus two. Okay, so let's target him. 
Uh, you all, but the combat advantage is canceled out by the fact that you're prone. Look at his legs. Uh, a basic attack. So that's just my Vanguard greatsword, right? Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. That hits. Yep. And so I get a plus. I'm bloodied, right? So I get a plus two to damage because I'm bloodied. You so are definitely bloodied. Yeah. Plus two because I'm bloodied because I'm using my Dragonborn Frenzy. And here's my damage on that now. Ooh. Eight. Uh, yep. that oh. means Ooh. Wait, he's dead, right? Yep, Cervanazor. Okay. Oh yeah. Cervanazor case, from his from yeah. from the grave. Cervanazor awakes at Zoga's command, and at and further at Zoga's command, Cervanazor cleaves the Null Marauder. And so, because I got this guy down to zero hit points, that means it uh, hits my Rising Fury, which is plus two damage until the end of your turn when you reduce an enemy to zero hit points. Rising Fury is the name of his penis. Oh my yeah. god. I forgot. Do I just click that or do I drag it onto my guy? I forgot. I don't know. What does it do again? It gives me a plus two. Yeah, you just drag uh, it on. It should be able to... Either either should work. Yeah, see? Yeah, I clicked it. It worked. Yeah. Cool. Okay. You know what? Uh, hey, in all fairness, um, that, so the, the attack that I gave to Sir Vanazor is not an interrupt. It's just a free attack. So he would have gotten an attack on me. He did. He already but did. He, Didn't he? That's what I interrupted. Oh, I guess he didn't. Where'd he go? Right, but he never actually he never actually ended up making the attack. Well, let's see. That was a Null Marauder, correct? Oh, dead, yeah. Um, yep. yeah, G Knowles, Null Marauder. I'll just grab him and put him back on the combat tracker for a second. Uh, and I guess I've also put him on the map and have him target you and open up his thing. And he gets a hey presto changeo. He's gonna hit you. And he does a D8 plus six. And the Null Marauder does a five extra damage against an enemy that has two or more of the Marauder's allies next to it. And he did not. So that's that guy's story. Actually, uh, I can uh, delete him from the combat track. would be even better. There we go. Okay, cool. And he's dead. The end. He did, he, did, he did strike out against Zoga and wound Zoga. But okay. nowhere near as much as you guys fucking... He fucked his shit up. Right. Uh, if I was to move out of this where I am, would the guy to my top right get an attack on me? If you moved out of that square, that guy in the t- correct, yes. Unless you shift, I charge. Unless you shift, well, unless you sh- well, yeah, yeah, yep. Unless you got some special ability, unless you got some special ability that says your charge movement doesn't provoke, or you like you shift your movement or something like that. Shifting doesn't provoke attacks or opportunity. Special movement. Otherwise, yep, you are correct. Ah. Huh. Fine. Then I think I'm just going to attack the guy next to me then, because I don't want to get another attack on me, considering I'm not in a good state at the moment. Uh, but I will use my Howling Strike. That was weird. Oh, bum. I missed. Bum. Bum. Classic yeah, no profanity. A- no action points. Point. damn. I mean, I could I'd be mad this when I just charge at that guy, but nah, I better not. Okay, that'll be it. Swift one. Go, Oren. Help me. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm going to move here, and then here, and then here. Nice. So, once I do that, I'm going to target both these guys, and I'm going to go ahead and use Sweeping Blow. Oh no! Wow, a seven Did hit. That's pretty good. It's only hit one guy. Like ideally, I think it would just say, "Hey, you rolled this. You got this bonus. You hit," and that would be it. And then if you wanted to, you could click on it, and it would expand, and it would say, "Hey, here are all the bonuses. You got this pl- plus two from this. You got minus two from this." And you go, "Oh, okay, yeah, it did all the math right." Who's this guy? Noel Blood Collar. So I'm gonna mark that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the blood collar seems to be the leader. Good. Not blood in his name. That's always yep. a little blood. Always a sign. Yep. It's never like no hugger. That's true. That's true. 
No handshaker. No. Nope. <laughs> it's always like no, no eats your inner. No, no respectful admirer. Yeah. <laughs> um. So here's the blood. I mean, the blood collar is perfectly happy to uh, untarget Servanna's or and sw- switch his attention to Oren. Um. Especially considering he's flanking with his buddy here. Uh huh. Unfortunately, his pack tactics aren't going to work because he only has one ally next to him. Um, so yeah, he's just going to attack Orin, it looks like. Yep, that's definitely going to hit. Yeah. And he's going to mark Orin. And no. that's his turn. And then Clawfighter <laughs> 1, who is dancing with Ko, I think he's probably just going to Hang on a minute. Yeah, this guy is going to go one, two, three, four. Uh, he does not provoke attacks of opportunity when he does that. This is mobile melee attack. He can no! move. He can move. <laughs> Good. I don't know. I don't know why this provoked that response, but I'm glad it did. Um, so I was about. I was literally poised to say, and Co takes an attack of opportunity, and then it was like, no. well. Um, so he. Makes a move up to four squares and make one melee basic attack at any moment during that movement. So he's still gonna. I don't know why he's doing this. What's the point of this? Uh, it doesn't matter. It just sounds cool. So he's gonna attack Ko as he goes by. He misses. And then he's gonna untarget Ko and target this asshole. And that's, um. Yep, that's his action. There. Uh, an old claw fighter asshole is gonna untarget Zervanazor. Changes attention, focus on Orin. Um, he's dazed, but he's where he needs to be anyway, so it's no big deal. And he's going to just straight up go, Hikeshire! That's going to hit. Not much damage. Is he bloodied? Are you bloodied, Noel Call Fighter 2? Yeah, yes! So you'd go and do extra, extra damage. Hey. Orin is bloodied. Um, hmm. Yep, okay, and he's done. Lavellus. There's a very complex okay. game of chess happening here. Sure is. Um, hey, Zoga, how averse are you to the idea of being a little bit on fire? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gauging. <laughs> this is just a survey. Doesn't necessarily indicate anything, but I would like your honest response. <laughs> uh, You've been on fire before from, from Lavellus. Yeah, I mean, because, okay. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> there are two options here. One involves you being on fire now. <laughs> the one involves you being on fire later. <laughs> but it's all fire. One involves you having a turn in which you can um, move before you're on fire. Uh, I think. Thank you. <laughs> I mean. Uh, Dale, how, Dale, thing, Dale right? how do you imagine this playing out in character? <laughs> Excuse me, Zoga. Uh, I know you're busy. Just curious. Look, I'm summoning. This is this is Lavelle is picturing this scenario in her <laughs> mind, where she has yeah. time to just like tap me on the shoulder and be like, excuse me, but uh, Exactly, I've got good time. insight. Yeah, this is me running through the, the the situation in my head and going, what would Zoga say if I was sort to of ask? Sort of like idly kicking the dirt, like wringing her hands. <laughs> just a little bit of uh, being on fire what? again. <laughs> Flashback um, to an experience in the woods. How would you rate being singed on a scale of one to five? <laughs> Um, I like the idea okay, that little Bellis is saying they're going, gosh, I, I'm pretty sure I lit this motherfucker on fire before, but I don't remember. <laughs> like, how pissed was he exactly? <laughs> yeah, he couldn't have been that angry. <laughs> it can't be that bad. It can't be that. You know what, though? Okay, first things first. I would like to summon my angel of fire, please, Matthew. Oh, for an angel of fire. Um, okay, excellent. Thank you so much. And then, you know what? We won't. Set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 this is good. We won't, we won't set anyone on fire just now, alright? But just... So you know, it is it is coming. Um, my God, so that the threat is real. <laughs> the threat is real. So, so that was my minor action. Uh, in the meantime, I am going to just um, Kinthalan's re retribution on this guy. Like Lavellis is oh, running that's my a good roll. Nice. Uh, now let me double check. I get to add plus three to this because um, Vanazor and Orin are both wounded, uh, bleeding, rather, whatever, whatever it's called. Birdies. Ouchies. Yes. Eh. Could be much wow. better than that. Nice. Not bad. Co. Hey, hey. Artie's here. But we have an <laughs> angel of fire in my spot. <laughs> <laughs> in my spot. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. or in the angel of fire spot. I would like to go now, but there's an angel of fire in my spot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I move through uh, her space? Yeah, sure. Uh, angel of fire is an ally. Uh, you're going to get an attack of opportunity. Yeah, Actually, a couple I saw, of them. I'm still all ruby -y, so I'm okay with that. Okay, well, as you move there, no claw fighter... Uh, one is going to just take a swipe at you. And hit. These guys don't do a lot of damage. Actually, no claw fighter one is not bloodied, so that's yeah, him Him cool. And then this, do, actually, I think Orin's going to get to fucking do her little rock'em sock'em robots thing here. Because this dude is going to uh -huh. untarget. Yeah, he's got co-targeted. Just made a oh, big mistake. Oh, it's targeted Oh, you're right. Sorry, I had Co. I'm sorry. Uh, so, first of all, untarget Co. This guy, sorry. This guy who does have Orin targeted, doesn't have Ogun targeted anymore, now is Co. targeted, but he's marked. Uh, so, she's going to get to do her thing. Does this guy mm -hmm. have... Nope, this guy still doesn't have... They had one moment where they had all their buddies where they needed to be. But... Um, do I get a because I'm flanking him with Angel of Fire? Do I get the advantage? Sure, yeah, she counts as an ally, Madam Crisco. So that uh, Noel blood collar ignores you, Orin, and turns to swipe at Coey misses because probably because you're you're in his face and making it difficult for him to ignore you. But you also because he made an attack that doesn't include you, you get to do some kind of dope ass shit. I don't know what exactly. It's not my character. Will it automatically know that we're flanking? No, it doesn't know. It doesn't know physical position on the board. Um, I got it. That'd be cool if it did. Make a note of that for future product development. That looks like a miss. Miss? Yep. Pretty Bellox. Where is she? Combat advantage. Plus, plus two. Yeah, plus 13. You just rolled a seven. Wait, what's this guy's Still. armor class? What's this guy's armor class? Oh, shit. Yeah, this guy's really hard to hit. Holy crap. Yep. Sucks. These okay, guys are well, nasty. That's the end of it. For me. <coughs> that, right. So that was, sorry, that was all on Ko's turn. Ko hasn't even gone yet. Yeah. Go ahead, Ko. Finish your turn. All right. Uh, I'm going to do my uh, eternal mountain movement technique. Uh, so I, it is a, it is a, Oh, sorry, I said movement technique. I meant attack technique. <laughs> uh, it's a close first one, so let me make sure I have the right people targeted. It doesn't have anybody targeted, so boop, boop. Uh, And I will attack, so it's dex versus fortitude. Yeah, yeah. That's a hit and a miss. miss. Yep. And a miss. That's okay, because I'm going to hit the other one with my fist. I'm going to get some of the drink. I'll be right back. Ideally, you guys should not need me. Fantasy Grounds should take care of everything. Okay, Fantasy, so. Fantasy Grounds, you hold down the fort. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. So I, Which one did I do the I damage need. against? L Blood um, Collar. Yeah. That's the blood one collar. to the right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to untarget him, and I'm going to hit the other one with my Flurry of Blows. <laughs> I get the bigger flu area blows because it's a different person I just hit. So I think... 
And uh, while Matt is gone, I'm going to do my daily power, which is Supreme Flurry. Ooh, it's a flurry, crap. but it's supreme. <laughs> which uh, lets me shift. Oh, actually, this is interesting. I can shift half my speed and use my Flurry of Blows power again. I would love to be away from Madame Crisco, so I'm going <laughs> to shift. <laughs> I can shift half my speed. So I'm going to go one, two, three. I see That's people moving fun. around. Does that mean you guys are still playing? Yes. yes. Here, I'll, yes. I'll put this here so you can read this. Ah, cool. There you go. Supreme flurry. That's just like a normal flurry, except it's got sour cream and tomatoes. Gross. Yes. You use your and flurry yeah, of blows power. power and resolve the effects of that power that triggered it. In fact, you shift half your speed and use your flurry of blows again. Fuck, that's cool. So yeah, so I hit those two. I go uh, super speed and then I punch this one in the mouth. <laughs> I like the flurry yeah, of blows is just damage. Just here you go. You have to roll. I love just, that. You just eat it. Yeah. It's nice. It is cool. That's me. Zoga. Ooh. So I am going to do my warlord's favor attack on Noel Claw Fighter number one. Oh, and it's a miss. Bummer. Um, but that's okay. Because I'm going to use my action point. <gasps> because I use my action point, my uh, fucking demon skin tattoo oh. gives me... That's the best kind of uh, Resist five to fire damage. Nice. So I like... I like, uh, you know, as part of my little you know, focusing to, to do another standard action. I like peek over my shoulder at Lavellis and wink and the tattoos just kind of like, pew, just like flash a little bit. And now yes. I'm fire That's, resistant. That is dedication to being metal. I am now fire That's retardant. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry. And <laughs> it's time. It's time to lead by example. So here's what's gonna happen. Before I attack, I can shift one square. Bloop. Uh, and then, well, bam. That's a nine. That's a miss. Ooh. That's okay. Oh, because how high is this AC? It's higher than twenty. I think because it might be the highest AC you guys have fought so far. Sorry. Go ahead, Tom. Oh. Uh, on a miss, two, yeah. two allies within five squares of me, that is Madam Crisco and you, can each shift one square and make a basic attack as a free action. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. You don't, so you don't have to shift, but it, I think it makes sense because it gives you advantage on this yeah. hard to hit guy. Right. Yeah. Well, Madam Crisco is going to erupt in flame. Hell yeah. That's a three. Yep. That's a miss. Oh, oh wait, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't roll for Zoga actually. I'm very sorry for remembering that. Well, twelve wouldn't hit me either. <laughs> oh no, wait, it was the three. It was the three. It was the three. I shouldn't have rolled again. It's the same. No, but I appreciate the sentiment that maybe you would have hit him. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> maybe you would have missed both the knolls and somehow only hit <laughs> somehow. me. It's happened before. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, and I can make my attack now. Yeah, and you get plus two yeah, for flanking. Go for it. Actually, you get combat advantage, which is plus two. That's a three. God damn it. Oh, so close to you. Are you kidding three. me? This is awesome. That's absurd. Damn. That is Art. so... Oh, Art. This Art. Is, was, I mean, clearly the shake the table a little bit. That's you frankly shake, painful shake the to fantasy watch. Ground shake the fantasy bit. ground window. That'd be great. I've been looking at, um, <laughs> at uh, digital pinball tables, and they are so high-tech and sophisticated that you can hit the table and the digital ball will move and you impart and it moves depending on where you hit the table and in what direction. It's like, fuck, that is cool as shit. Cool. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. You're like, damn, that's definitely a feature. Zoga did here. so much cool stuff on that turn and just none of, none of it landed. <laughs> no, Lavellus rolled a yeah, three, so Oren sad. rolled a three. It was awesome. The great, oh. the mighty Woderhead brought low by a bunch of barking dog boys. It's kind of funny because the, the attack was lead by example. <laughs> yeah, lead, lead by example. Let's all roll threes. 
than everybody missed. I feel bad, though, it worked. because it was a dope turn. It was. Are you done, uh, Tom? <laughs> oh, yes, I am. Wait, am I? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't even know whose turn it is. I, I did an attack. I used an action to point, and then I and then I did my daily, which is how I shifted. So I am... Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Now, Dan Azor gets another inspiring word. See, uh, you see, you like that? <laughs> That's how it's done. <laughs> Not a very good healing word, but there we go. Yeah, you'll be fine, I, I think. <laughs> see, oh, no, we're, we're fine. <laughs> Un- unconvincingly, Zoga tells you that <clears throat> it's fine. Are you done? <laughs> now I'm done. Okay. You know, I'm trying to hit this guy again, I guess. Got a game at some point, haven't we? Uh, no blood collar is surrounded. Uh, yeah. I don't get advantage on him, I do, because I'm not flanking. Uh, correct. And unless you have a. Unless you can shift two squares, which I. Then there's no real easy way for you to get flanking. If you were standing opposite the Angel of Fire, you'd have flanking. Six is going to miss. My God. This is awesome. You know, who, needs, who needs high AC when no one can roll above a six? Can't hit anything. Sweet. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. No yeah. action points. Yeah. I've just done my attack. See you later. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, Anna. This is the end. <laughs> my only, my friend. only friend. The, the end. end. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Grabbing is a standard action, right? Um. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Is it an option where I can like hold? Like, I can ready an action because, like, I don't want to do. I don't want to grab him now, but I would like to (laughs) grab him once he's done doing his thing. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, I could grab him, but it's just about to be his turn, and, like, he's just going to try and break out of it. So it's like a. Well, why would he. Why would he. Why would he break out of it? I don't know. Maybe he wants to go somewhere. I think he's right where he wants. I mean, he's looking forward to attacking you guys. Yeah, shame. Yeah, well, fuck it. I guess I'll try and do my thing. I'll try and I'll, I'll try and use a grappling strike on him in that case. Krashim. Krashim. Okay, I've got him. You don't have him targeted. Yep, yep, yep. No, I have him targeted. He had a plus two, so I think I get to do a combat advantage here. And I got a grappling strike. Okay. Please. Please. Nope. You piece of crap. No, 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 no. Time. Look, how does it happen every single time? I don't know. This sucks. Uh, and I can't use an action point. Because I already used my action point. I like the blood there. I think I'm the blood crawling No, 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 no. Okay. The end. All right. Um. Ooh, this guy's yeah. It's considering how how high this guy's armor class is, you guys have done an enormous amount of damage to him. Um, he's marked by Orin. He is bloodied though, so he's going to take a minor action. Um. Yeah. So Orin. He goes the, the the he kind of like um, he goes into a frenzy and just lashes out with his claws and you take five damage and Zoga takes five damage and Cervanosaur takes five damage and then oh. you're all marked by him. Huh. And For the attacks that hit the other people, like with him being marked, do I get to interrupt that? Uh no, because this is not an attack. No attack roll. Just happens. That's a minor action. And now he... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. And also, it wouldn't work because um, it, yeah, it, 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 include, it included you anyway. But there, as far as I'm concerned, if there's no attack roll, then it's not an attack. Uh, could be wrong, but that's my interpretation. Uh, so now that he's done that, he's going to shift... One, two, three. Yep, 
and then he does a close burst five, uh, which is gonna uh, only gets the people that he has marked. Yeah, so it's Oren, Zoga, and Cervanazor. And what the hell does he have that reaches close burst five? It's a, uh, it's a, uh, he, 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 uh, it holds up his bloodied claws and he calls out he calls out to the his noble gods and you all take um well you know, who knows what happens we got rolled to hit maybe you won't did take he, anything did he shift to yep. move over there he did yes wow full hit but, oh. but he only has oh he shouldn't he shouldn't have I got an untarget co he doesn't have co-target it's only the people he's marked um oh thank you so that is his blood call, which does a D10 plus nine psychic damage. And you get pulled, Whoa. and you get pulled, and you get pulled. Ah, you are, you are You are, like, compelled. Like, almost like hypnotized. And he's done. I don't know what the Radical. fuck. I don't know what the fuck good that did. Um, this guy's, I think he's going to move here. Is he shifting too? No, I don't think he is. Wait. All right. Uh, standard action: move up to four squares. This null does not. The null does not provoke attacks for opportunity when moving away from the moving away from the target of its attack, which is not what it's doing. It's moving. So yeah. I so guess. I get yep. I get my opportunity attack. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Null jerky out of this fool. Mm, but not with an eight. No, oh, this guy. If you guys, if you guys can't roll, if, you, if the party can't roll above an eight all night, then you guys are gonna have a bad time. Oh yes! Oh, so good. Oh, uh, I don't know if you saw that, but it was definitely a two. It was definitely a two, worry. and then it went. Don't worry. I get, to, I get to interrupt. Still. Do you? Yes. Uh, this guy. You, he's marked. Is he? Wait, is this the uh, blood no. collar? No, this is the Noel Noel Clawfighter one. It's the guy. Oh uh, my bad! To the I thought it was the blood. Of, no, no, oh, he's on there. It's because he had. Don't worry, you guys. When you all die, I, I have one invisibility frame dude. left, it's so I can dude. run. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> yeah. What did I? Um. He, yeah. He critted Zoga, and is he bloodied? Did you guys fuck this guy? Nope. He's not bloodied. So that's a. You're not gonna take that much damage. Ah. Uh, yes. Oh, I'm bloodied again. Yes. Yes. Tom? Uh, Something happens when I get bloodied. Oh. I should have temporary hit points. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Anyway, yep. that guy is I should have five hit. temporary hit points. Let me see. This guy is going to shift. He's gonna... Oh, you know what? I probably did, and then because uh, I think that worked before. That's not the first time I've taken damage since I was bloodied, I don't think. Null Claw Fighter. Oh, yes, it was. This other Null Claw Fighter shifts, targets Orin, and... Uh, he, Oren only has one of his allies adjacent to him, which sucks. Uh-huh. 10 plus 11. Stop hitting! Stop succeeding! There you go. Oh, Oren drops. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh my god. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There you go. These guys actually don't do uh, they don't I, I, they don't do a lot of damage. It's like a D6, a D6. It's just Yeah, uh, definitely they, no damage at all. They keep hitting. They keep hitting. That's the difference, I think. Oh, right, wait, no. Gosh. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, great. Um, Everything's bad. Everything is bad. There's a lot of pressure to roll well. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's a lot of pressure casting, to roll well. I'm casting Melior's <laughs> summons, uh, and I pull you... Is it two or is it three? How far do I pull you? Three. Great. And I pull you. Three. One, two, three. Great. Um, and then, and that's my minor action, and then I'm going to cast Gwynegad's Verdict right here in this zone, hitting all three gnolls and also unconscious Orin. I'm very sorry, Orin. Um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me double check a thing real quick. <laughs> who's, who's okay. 34, that, okay, neither of those is good, no, none of it's good. Everything's bad, everything's bad. I just need everyone to know that everything's bad. Okay. Fine. Um, no. <laughs> okay. We'll be all right. Okay. 
I hate everything. I hate it. I hate it. I hate why, why? You're you're fine. You're out here in the middle of nowhere. We have no damage. No one's attacking you. Yeah, I'm. Not, I'm getting. You've got an you've got an invisibility leaf. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna die. I'm worried about you guys. <clears throat> oh, you only hit the gnolls, except for the I blood collar. Yeah, we'll be fine. Great, love that for us. Big fan, really big fan. So two d six wisdom lightning damage, um, and minus three to their defenses each. I think. Sweet. Oh, and I should have done more damage than that. I should have done um, four damage. Well, no claw fighter two dies. Who was the other? Who was the other guy you hit? Um. Actually, uh, I can. It was no. It was a claw fighter one. Top, you did how much more guy. damage? Yeah. How much more damage? Four? Um, four extra damage. Okay, so he has forty-one damage total. Um. Yes. That's and another. You got. You got uh, another one of the gnolls dies. There's only two gnolls left. Something happened to their defenses. Their defenses are bad. That's it. That's my turn. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, for a muse of fire. That's um. The angel of fire is. Doesn't do anything this turn, right? Because you. I don't think thing. so, because because I can't split up my movement, right? right. So even it's though either you go or it square, goes, it just can't. Yeah, move. yeah right. Co. There's an mm -hmm. unconscious Orin next to you. Oh well. These two. This these this blood collar is pretty confident. He's like, yeah, I got these guys. Um, he's think in Noel. He's thinking, we got this. I'm gonna click that because I used it. Well, I'm gonna use my Eternal Mountain movement technique, which I haven't used. <laughs> so it's gonna technique. give me a little bit more ruby. I'm gonna shift two squares, ruby, so I'm gonna ruby, excuse ruby, 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 me, go. step over Orin's body. A <laughs> uh, <laughs> little awkward, but needed to be done. Um, let's see. Why do I see see a red line from Zoga to the null? I think that's not. I don't think that applies to me. It's just showing, um, if you mouse over Zoga, it just shows you who he's attacking. Okay, <clears throat> that's good to know. All right, I'm going to target both of these uh, gnolls. Both of these with gnolls? Both of these gnolls, gnoll saying. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to do my five storms attack technique. Five storms. Holy God, good, your abilities yeah. are fucking, they have cool names, dude. Sorry. They have really cool names. Five and stories. yeah, I feel like I don't do them justice by describing them lately. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to, uh, you know, yeah, I have my club now. And can my club be coated in ruby as well? I think that would be really cool. That's up to you. Sure. Yeah. My club. Yeah. I'd like to have Mike, it. Yeah, Mike, so I yeah. have this, my like, club. I have like this like semi-translucent <laughs> club that I'm swinging around at both of them. Let's see if I hit. E well, one of them. That's hit. a hit. A hit and a miss. You hit. You hit the oh, claw then, fighter. Minimum damage. It's okay because that means that since I hit this one but not this one, I can turn around and I can punch the shit out of this one in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, so, that. Yeah, dude. So it's I so cool. Like it, like like you have this. Yeah, it's just straight up. I, you just punch some. Punch it's easy. Whack. I don't have to roll anything. Nope. Okay, for so granted. Yeah, so I turn around and whenever I pimp whenever slap. I punch this knoll, you see like the cracks go up his fist as like bits of ruby dust just kind of sparkle off. Very Sailor Moon for a moment. <laughs> uh, awesome. I don't know what and that is. That's but my okay. turn. It's like I was there. Zoga. <laughs> I think because I'm almost dead, my little "It's your turn" chime is a little more somber. It's like a, it's like in a like <laughs> diminished bum, key bum, now. Bum. Uh -huh. yeah. Does it really like, change? That's funny. That would be funny if it did. It's like flat. That would be funny if it did. That'd be a cool doc undocumented feature. All right, it's time for Tom. It's time for you to zog. Zog like you've never zogged before. Man, I that was my last turn. <laughs> that that was pretty. Although that was, <laughs> that was maximum. Zoking, like I zoging exactly as I've zoged before. That was maximum zog. Um, yeah. All right, here's how this is. This is how this is going down. Three. What the fuck? We just disappeared off my screen. Four, okay. five. Hell yes. Since I'm flanking, I get plus two. Beep, beep. Combat advantage. And it's time for an inspiring war cry. Mm, that sounds good. So, uh, I target uh, this null blood collar. Uh, 
And one ally who can hear me and it was and is within five squares of me makes a saving throw. That would be Orin. Saving throw. Uh yeah. Yeah, I mean a death save, I guess, is what you're imagining. Is that would that not count? I mean I'm 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 at like that's the only effect she's under. I guess like it's not her turn. So you would be if she rolled a you know, if she rolled a 20, that'd be great. But if she doesn't, then she could accumulate a death save earlier. Like, she's going to make a save on her turn, right? And so you're giving her a chance to make another save. It'd be great if she rolled a 20. But if she doesn't, then... (laughs) Whatever, I I still want to do it. Like, the main reason that I want to do this is because it's actually, it's a double weapon damage attack. Um... So I'm still gonna still gonna do it. Inspiring war cry. I yell something ex- expiring uh, at Orin. Probably something Did you like say inspiring or expiring. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll inspiring. figure out what I roll. I, we'll find out what you roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I scramble around to behind this guy, flank him, and I shout at Orin's, you know, writhing body on the ground, <laughs> like you're fine. Oh my oh, yeah. god. Man, oh. it did say it did say nineteen for a brief moment. I mean, that was your total. Yeah. Well, this was fun. This was do, a I fun get to roll, do I get to roll my save? Uh, you make your death saves at the end of your turn. No, I want to do it now. I have a save from the Zoga. Oh, okay. What's up to you? Yeah, go for it. Is that what it is? Yeah, might as well, what, right? Like that's what you're talking about, right? We're all dying anyway. All well, right, so, here you go. So we right. Yep, she is one step closer more. to death. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a good well, time to it, remind Zoga that he has a white berry. Uh, I've got a berry. One more successful attack. Yeah, right. That's the uh, and then I eat my white berry. You're, eat, you're eating your <laughs> white berry? So the, you eat the white berry and you feel great. You feel like you just got a great night's sleep. And you woke up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, ready to take on the world. And you you view this f- fight with new perspective. Great. I feel awesome. Um, all right. What am I doing here? <laughs> you, you've got a Healy thing, right? Do you have a Healy thing? Oh, wait. Oh, shit. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. What 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 is does the, uh, eating the berry does that count as an action? It's a minor action. It's a minor action. Yep. Okay, so I I use my action like, points like drinking a potion or reading a scroll or something. Right. Okay. Jesus, you justice. Yep. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> like Zoga's like really awake. <laughs> Watch out for Florida, man. <laughs> Orin's right. alive. It. It's Cervantes. Orin's fine. Yep. Woo! I'm alive! Wee! We're back in it, baby! Okay. You're back in the ring to take another swing. I also have my healing very still. Well, right you can do what you're doing. You better save it. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something. I'm not gonna take it. I'm gonna move. We're not gonna He's take it. it to threaten Matt. <laughs> no, no, we ain't gonna take it. And then I'm gonna charge. One, two, three, Always be charging. Four. Oh, I thought you were gonna charge Zoga. No. <laughs> uh, and so I am flanking this git face. Sure. So Don't forget you get plus. You get plus one on a charge. And a plus one. So I flank. So charge plus one. Yep. And then flank is plus two. Another two. Yep. So that's plus three, yep. right? Yep. Uh, by the way, you're going to roll a three. Let's modify that up a plus three. And then howling strike with my charge. Come on now. I guess that's fine. You, didn't have, five? you didn't have anybody targeted, but you, yeah, you, oh. if you had, you would have hit that guy. You'll remember next time. There you go. There's target. That's, it. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, you hit him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. Wait, why does it say Lavellus Howling Strike? I don't know. That was really I dropped, the, I dropped the number of the thing. I wanted to know. I wanted to know if it hit. <laughs> it does. Oh, it, does. It, does it, it does. It does hit. It does hit. 
That's cool. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know another player that could just... That is I. I thought it was worth a shot. It's, that's cool, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am blooded, so I get a plus two to my damage as well, because I'm blooded. So now I can do my attack. Yeah, Zoga starts feeling like, maybe I, I feel like I need another one of those berries. Yeah, good. Ah! Yeah. Servanazor, of yeah. course. Yeah. Of course it's Servanazor that kills Always the no blood cow. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that means I get my plus two. I get my rising fury again, don't I? Yeah, I do. So down boy. Uh, I just click that, don't I? Yep. Very nice. That. Servanazor kills uh, the no blood collar. That's the end of my go with a big. That's fucking cool. That Always you rely on Servanazor to fucking. <laughs> you, this is an epic. Right. You guys are an epic party. You guys are like superheroes. It's cool. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Oh, it's the no call fighter now, right? Yep. Just That's him. Just so. him. I'm gonna roll up on this guy. And I'm gonna use Steel Serpent Strike. So I'm gonna target him. I didn't expect that to turn into a romance at the end. He's a painter. He's a painter and he painted the the seven Greek muses on the side of this skate rink, and they, they come alive, and they're the real Greek muses. Yes. Hit! Woo. Finally. Oh, this would be very satisfying. Come on. Dying! Yes! Yes! yes. There, we yeah. there we go. Oren oh. executes the last Knoll fighter, and the Knolls are dead. This Now this Get area and, like, belongs rub to Rub some head. blood off my face and go after him. That was cool. That was fucking cool. That was awesome. That was an epic oh battle. Gosh. That was really. Yeah, that was I, thought, yeah. I thought that was fucking. I mean. Water head. Water head. Water head. I know. I know oh that. Um. I know it can feel tedious sometimes, but it, it for me, imagining imagining what you guys are actually doing, it's incredibly cinematic in my head. It's super fucking cool. Ooh. I feel like it'd be cool, except all I can see in my head is myself whipping repeatedly over and over and over. <laughs> I don't remember. I, 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 don't, I don't remember those parts. Uh huh. I remember the dope I'm shit. Sure, from the Noel's perspective, not the not it looks shit. awesome. Um, all right, so uh, you guys, I assume now that two of you are fully rested, <laughs> uh, that huh. you're going to continue on and head over to the cave with the humans in it. I want to. I'm going to use. Can I? Can I just use like healing surges now? Yep. Like, you guys can use all the healing. I can give you guys a short rest, which um, unlocks your any encounter powers that you haven't uh, already. And actually, this is short rest plus a milestone because you guys had the the battle against uh, Blood Drinker Vryn, and so milestone means you get your action point back, and your encounter powers refresh, and you can spend as many healing surges as you want. There's a little button for it on your character sheet. Um, so Zoga, could we expect any more of the the dog bastards or? You know, I, I never, I never used my um, tactics check. Could I uh, use it for that? Sure, absolutely. Kind of yeah. like, yeah, like, yep. can I, can I make a tactics check to see, like, is this just a, a random patrolling little mob of gnolls, or is this like something that that I know about? Go ahead and roll. I'm gonna put it in the tower just because I feel like it's more fun that way. Um. You, you you haven't really well actually shit yeah you're you're plus ten yeah um uh so what would what would that result what kind of knowledge would that get you um I would say, you, you, no you don't think it's likely you're gonna fight any more gnolls okay they're just are the the knoll the knoll tribe there's not that many of them so they don't really have uh, their own they don't really have their own territory they sort of exist in the territory between some of the other tribes. So it sounds like they're not like super organized, right? Like this wouldn't have been specifically a strike against us. Then. Well, they're, no, they're nowhere near as organized as the Blood Skulls or the Orcs or the Gold. Yeah, um, they're more like a tribe of. They're, more, they're they're just. I mean, they they would love that, but there just aren't that many of them. Yeah, right on. Well, I'll, I'll kind of relay that to the group then, and just kind of be like, we're probably good to just keep moving. They're also like, there's not that many of them, and they're spread out over a larger area because they don't have their own territory. They have to kind of exist between oh, the, yeah. between well, the that kind of makes sense why we would just run into them in a thicket right yeah it's, you're you're because you left you're, you're no longer in Hob hobgoblin territory which means you're yeah. kind of you're kind of in the no man's land where anybody could attack you here 
Uh, and this is that's this. Uh, hey, maybe give him a quick search just in case they've got something on them worthwhile. Mm. I'll particularly search the main guy. I mean, and, uh, they've got. Drinker, you can you you grab. Um, that's interesting. I rolled a bunch of dice, but I didn't get a result. Um, the secret even for 17 me? you get like yeah, oh, there we go oh, that only took about 30 seconds you find 20 gold in, in mostly in silver whoa just that they've got in pockets and stuff that they've they've pillaged what do they, what do they need money for they don't they, they don't they just know it's they just it's, like it well they're, they, they kill people and some of those people have have cash on them they're like oh cool what are we gonna do with this I don't know well, fair enough some people collect shark teeth Better than nothing. It's like uh, counting coup. It's one of the ways they track. They know it's important. That like a lot of the cultures in the Woad are like, well, we don't really use gold, but we know it's important to these assholes. So take it from <laughs> them. Okay. All right. Well, I'll have that. <laughs> uh, shall so we? shall we? We we, we got to keep on our shall way. Yeah. This place is the worst. Let's go back to the humans. Doka just remembered that he never paid for any of the drinks that he got at the goblin place. Oh so my god. He's so like, oh right, ago. that's what that's for. Like, this moment just reminded him that, like, that's what... <laughs> oh, currency! These, these people use, use the coins for. It's also one of those things about, like, the only real thing that's... It's interesting how 4E works. There isn't really anything to spend cash on, except when the dungeon master awards you a magic item that you don't want, you can melt it down into a magical substance unique to fourth edition called residuum. And the amount of residuum you get is equal in value to half the cost of what you melted down. So you then marry it with some gold and you can turn it into whatever magic item you want that is of the right level. So that's the only thing you use gold for in this game. There's no, there's no magic shops you can walk into and buy stuff. It's just if the dungeon master gives you an item that you don't want and you have enough cash, you can melt it down and you, you get this magical goop <laughs> that you can then impart into any other item that you want to make. And, uh, and as a result, the actual official advice in the dungeon master's guide is, therefore, don't bother giving your players magic items they don't want. Just ask them. Just ask them what magic items they want and give them to them. <laughs> And I was like, this pretty is pretty sure they have that in critical role. I think they, they must have taken that from here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's um, it's a very weird like because the whole idea of magic items in fourth edition is their main job is to give you certain specific mathematical bonuses when you hit and, and damage so that you keep up with the monsters, because otherwise without magic items, the, you'll be like you'll be you'll be down plus one. So they just they sh kind of shore that up. It's kind of weird anyway. Kind of strange that like most of our adventuring yeah. has been in this forest. Like we don't know what we're like in a city. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Except yeah. for the fact that we start fights very quickly. Well, yeah, and you remember when you guys, one, you guys, yeah. you guys spent like a day in uh, Castle Dalrath, or rather the town that surrounds Castle Dalrath, and like you, you were not, you were not particularly welcome, especially the elves. Like actually, Co, you got, you know. They're like, oh shit! It's one of the, it's one of the barrow men, um, but otherwise, I'm gonna have to go back and see them and say hello. What up? Yeah, yeah. All these healthy, alive people. Oh, Excellent. sweet! <laughs> Yay! You've managed not to die. This is great news. Right. Good job. Frankly, to clarify, I'm, you know. I said I mentioned it last session, but I'm just gonna mention it again. I'm just like, I'm, I'm, my cape is over my arm just a bit. I'm not like <laughs> over the top trying to hide it, but I'm just trying to like minimize the uh, you have a ruby arm now factor. Uh, uh huh, uh huh, and uh. Yeah, I do the same thing with my face. I just throw a cloth <laughs> over my face. Everything is fine. <laughs> well, Classic. just to uh, remind ourselves, we we came back here to spend some time to become attuned to the orb, right? Yeah. Attu attuned to the orb. Attuned, attuned, must to, attuned, the orb. attuned to the orb. Attuned Which I think is, to the that orb. needs to be Levellus, right? Uh, 
Do we reckon? I mean, um, it could also be Orin. Yeah, it, it oh, said okay, that it so would need an elf pick? in order to open the bridge. So um, you guys, you guys um, make your way to the cave, and uh, as you, which this is not literally the map of the cave, uh, the dragon's lair, uh, but it's the map I had with all the all the humans on it, and I didn't want to go through the rigmarole of copying and pasting them onto the other <laughs> map. Um, Remainer, is this cloak fashionable? Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> And so, but there's still the, uh, if you remember the um, the encounter with the at the dragon's lair, there was a pool in front of it. It was like raised up. The cave was behind it, and so the humans are all kind of spread out over this um, uh, over the area. And you can see that they've actually, you know, they've taken in the time you've been gone, they've set up little wooden like um, I don't know what you call them, but like. They're, they've got meat that they've killed that's hanging off that's you know being they've they've gutted and they've they've set up they've set up like you know a little tiny town here basically and uh and, and Anne Polly is the one who's kind of standing on the dragon's carcass kind of just staring in at the edge of the clearing and then when she finally sees the party emerge she starts basically screaming like a little girl like an excited little girl and she she dashes and runs and jumps and throws her arms around Ko's neck. I come. <laughs> Ko gives a big hug. And then like sets Aunt Polly down and pats her on the top of the head. And you're alive! You're alive! What what happened to you? <gasps> you look you look fancy. Uh yes, this is uh it's it's uh, something we uh, barrow men do a, a, a ceremony called uh, the, the b- bedazzling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of look over at uh, Lavellus and shrug. Lavellus also shrugs. <laughs> Is that a good answer? <laughs> like... Sure. I mean, who knows anything about the barrow men, right? Could be real. Uh, and then, yeah, so then I guess I'd like redirect, like, oh, but you look very different. Tell me, what have you been up to here? I see you were standing on the dragon, like, just direct the child elsewhere. <laughs> uh, I mean, she grabs you, she grabs you by the hand, which requires her to reach eye up. And she is gonna, like, drag you back to the camp, um, which, you know, she ran, she ran toward you as you emerged from the thing. And she just starts babbling about everything that's happened and about. You know how um, how Hugh Tinney played a joke on her, and little tiny little tiny facts of life as these people were camping that are happily pretty meaningless. They she everybody here is still alive. They don't appear to have undergone any kind of hardship. Um, uh, nobody's dead. The camp appears to be largely the way you left it, except that obviously they have um, they've established themselves here. Well, I think we ought to talk to Demelza, but I think I'm I'm gonna like try and get a word in privately with Lavellus and just say, "Hey, you know, can you ask this this crystal arm of yours if it knows what that uh, hobgoblin meant by the one uh, above all or whatever? She who is above all. Does that name ring a bell?" Yeah. Um. So are we? F- I just just making sure that I'm far enough away that no one's gonna hear my robot hand. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just girl things. Um. <laughs> I love how the presence of Remainer now as part of you <laughs> has kind of turned you into this almost like a Raceland figure. I don't know if that means anything. You're like you have to like have a cloak over your arm, and you gotta you have to turn, and they can't see me. You gotta hide. I you gotta don't... you have to whisper to your arm, right? Like you it's become fine. this almost I just sinister don't want them to figure. Freak out. Yeah, they don't trust me very much. Yeah. I don't think this would add. No, you've to definitely the trust. gone from you're definitely behaving in a trustworthy manner now. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna turn well, away I'm, and I'm whisper to my hand. I've always been standoffish with them. What's this that? What's that, Remainer? Kill them now? I, but I can't. <laughs> red rum, red rum. <laughs> 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 um, Remainer, uh, do you know what that uh, what blood drink of Ren meant when he said the? Uh, she who is above all. I am unable to answer without my remaining digits. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, okay, well, uh, let's ask real quick as well. Uh, uh, do, do you know anything about the Blood Skull Hobgoblins? Mm, you get the same answer. Same answer, same answer. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay. Do you have anything well, else you want to ask? Just kind of sh- Soga just shrugs at, uh, at Lavellis and says maybe we should just talk to Demelza yeah. about this, uh, the Midnight Stone. I, I think so. See if she knows anything about all of this shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, okay, like, uh, yeah. Th- yeah, Demelza says, I'm very glad to see you're alive. Well, you know, I, I was never really worried about it. Uh, Lavellis was a little bit. And Cervanazor got, you know, got banged around a little bit here and there, but he's fine. I'm trying to think, yeah. like, the, 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 the townsfolk, the townsfolk are all, like, um, as, as, as Anne Polly leads Co back to the camp, they all abandon whatever it was they were doing, and they, they surround you, and they want to know, they want to know what happened. And they're all, they all, in various ways, they all encourage you to say, you know, they're all hugely relieved that you're here. They're like, oh, thank God we can, we can, you know, they actually use language like, oh, we can go home, even though they're not going home, right? But that's, that's kind of where their head's at right now. They're so excited. And they're, like I said, they're hugely relieved, but they, they want a debriefing. What happened? Zoga just goes off down a rabbit hole talking about the differences in, like, the combat tactics between blood skull hobgoblins and gnolls, hobgoblins. differences in the in the weapons that they use and things like that like he's just nerding out and just like has completely uh-huh. lost the plot That's funny. <laughs> okay. um well they're all they all they every time you every time you bring up like when you start talking about the hobgoblins they're like hobgoblins and they want to know you know they don't really know anything about hobgoblins they're only only like legends they hear in fairy tales um, and they, they definitely want to know what happened to Ko, because now he's made out of, he's got Ruby filling all his cracks. He's a rhinestone cowboy. Whoever said that? KB oh, Tins. I have to, I have KB to Tins. move. I, I literally, I have to, I have to go. Oh, wait. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Shut it all yeah. down. Shut it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, KB Tibbs, uh, you're fired. Moving on. Oh my God. <laughs> My goodness. So do you do you like leave anything out when you talk when you when you talk, tell them what happened? Or, or do you just oh, basically like, focus do you basically just focus on the fights you got in and leave the rest of the imagination? Right. I I'm like yeah, I, I'm not really talking about like the greater narrative of what's going on. I just sort of get hyper focused on like talking about the shape of a knoll's blade and and how that makes it interesting to fight them well a, a handful of the villagers mostly the um the older men are like super interested in that but when it, be, when it becomes obvious that you're not actually telling the story of what happened the rest of the villagers all turn to like m- m- mostly ko and Cervanazor, and they want to know what happened well and when they when they bring up what's different about ko then that kind of snaps zoga back into it and he's just like oh well shit doesn't know how to answer that so he kind of like sinks a little bit. Let's uh, one of the smart people answer that one. Don't you have the highest intelligence? It's a different kind of intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rock tumbler fascination. <laughs> well, I, I kind of feel torn. I feel like I feel like Barrow men would be like an honest people. Like they live so long. Like they. You know, that lot probably like lying does not pay off in the long run, I feel like a lot of the time. So, well, also, I like the, the barrow men are like, you know, compared to normal, any normal species that lives in this world, you guys are immune to elements. You don't, you don't, you don't get cold, you don't get hot, you don't really experience disease. So, like, why lie about stuff? You guys, you guys don't have the same kind of like, you guys don't have the same psychology as <coughs> these people that live short lives and suffer from disease and they have to worry about the elements and stuff like that. I mean, I kind of would probably like whisper to, to Vanazor in my like ultra bass voice about uh, like, should I tell them when you spend more time around humans, would it break them to know that I died? Uh. Um... 
should be. I don't. It's, I'm not good at lying. I don't think we need to tell them. I'm just kind of talking a little bit out of character. I don't. I don't think we need to tell. We can tell them that you know we found a tower. We fought. We fought some goblins. It was a hard fight. We had to. You know, we managed to separate them. Uh, and then while we separated them, we managed to steal a, a, an artifact from them. We might be able to tell them about that, right? But actually telling them about like the Velus going to dusk and you dying <laughs> that might be too much for them but we can make it an extremely grand story still right how we separated them we conquered the blood drinker and his war caster and you know and then even on the way back we were attacked by a ruthless band of gnolls who we just you know we I feel like as Vanador is saying this, I just uh, kind of uh, shoulder you into the middle of the crowd and like encourage you to speak louder. <laughs> yeah, then, 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 then I'm off. Yeah, and I'm kind of giving this grand story of like, yeah, well, we found this, you know, this tower. It looked like a great stronghold. We we attacked it. Uh, had this fine plan, but it was slightly a little bit too much for us. So we defied it and conquered them, and uh, we managed to steal this rare artifact from them, <gasps> which we let's see it. We're gonna, rare artifact. Uh, Rare artifact. Oh, wait, they all wait, want to see the rare. Where is it? Like, what kind of artifact? Like a sword? Like a like a like a crown? What? what like, what kind of artifact? Oh, I'm just gonna say simply something that might be able to help us get you out of this forest. And with my left hand, pull out the orb. <laughs> oh my god! We need, we need to we need to learn more about it. That's why we've come here. We've come. Look! To don't this. touch. Yeah, they're all fascinated. They're eyes. like, oh, and they, you know, it's some. They, they want to touch it, and and what's it made out of? What does it do? Right? They're, they're hugely fascinated. Step you, back. Step back. back. We're not. It's not quite ready for everyone to be crowding around it. We, we need to find out exactly what it does. It's a. It's um for some of you uh, on a person by person basis. It's up to you how do you react, how you react to this. But the human beings. It's been now a couple of. It's been a couple of days since last time you saw these people. And um, they are just overwhelmed with gratitude and hope, and their faces are all just projecting that onto you guys, right? Like you're their, sa- you're literally their saviors. You're their guardians, and you've come back for them. And uh, you know, there was probably some doubt regarding whether or not you guys would live or whether you, they could trust you, but that is all resolved. And they're all looking at you. Some as might though- say that doubt was founded. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, I, I maybe sort of said now. Now, as a group, we need to spend some time, um, and we can then work out how we can carry on with your safe passage through this world. There's a there, a couple of them cheer when you say that, and then the rest of them are like, "Oh, thank God, yes!" Or you know, thank the gods, and so they're like, "Yeah, let's pack everything up." Wait, not yet. Well, I don't know. We don't need to pack up right now. <laughs> yeah, we need to. Let, I don't know. What time of day is it? This is an it's a, it's ancient about, elven artifact. Okay, we need to study it for a little while. Yeah. We're well, relaxed. it's going to take them. It's going to take them it, 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 at least an hour to un to decamp from here. Like we're, they, they didn't just. We're leaving w- within a couple of hours. Oh, okay. Well, right? fair enough. I'll tell you what Vanessa's hey, do. You know, like, some of us point, need to sleep. Some of us didn't eat a white berry. <laughs> I'm gonna on, on that thing. I'm gonna, this, oh, this, this is a time for, for, for celebration, and I'm gonna bring out. Hey, my, you uh, still, uh, Vanis, oh, you still have that's a white right. Berry, right? Vanessa's got the ever flowing cask. Berry. Yeah, I'm gonna bring out my cask of liquid gold. Yeah, and, and you I'm remember like, like this, is a, this is a this is a time for us to rejoice and celebrate. It's we're we're back. We've returned to you. Hope is restored and stop pouring out drinks come on everyone try yeah. to like get them to focus more on uh you know don't worry too much for now about yeah, packing yeah. up and going let's have a few drinks and relax yeah, yeah. the 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 there was specifically two of these guys that you got completely shit-faced with last time you were here uh yeah the the cat they're they're all super excited to see the cask is back and uh and they start getting their cups they, they, the cask. yeah they grabbed all their they have these tin these you know ancient tin cups that they pass around and and um and some of them some of them start tr- start like unpacking like let's let's or, or rather packing up and then others like no we're gonna be here for a while we're not leaving right this second didn't hear what didn't hear what they said that kind of thing and they're like oh okay celebration so they start you know cooking the food that they've been while they're um you know in in uh, celebration mode and a little distracted i might <laughs> i might do like a Remainer. pointed look Remainer. at at demelza and just like 
you know, little little head nod, like, good for a minute. I want to get in on this, so I'm I'm, I'm going to wave Oren over too, and, and just like, I'm, you know, yeah. want to get in a little huddle with these guys. Yeah. Bloop. Okay. Okay. In that, in that case, I think I see what's going on, and I'm going to kind of continue, you know, just kind of telling more stories and just generally distracting the humans. Yeah. Um. I'm with me, Co. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hmm. So I'm, I'm going to basically be like to to Lavellis and Oren as much as Demelza be like, look, I think we're we're probably on a ticking clock here. Like, as, the sooner we can get out of this cave, the better. And I think that you know, like this this moonstone thing is probably our best bet. Like, if we can, <laughs> if we can. <laughs> If we can project ourselves through the manifold or whatever, whatever the we, we gotta we gotta about. fill in Demelza. Um, <laughs> yeah, like Zoga's just kind of this overwhelmed. This might be. But, <laughs> What's <but> a clock? <laughs> I mean, it's cerebral for Demelza. <laughs> the invention of time <laughs> in the first place is already weird for elves. The idea of measuring it with a circle is hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm used to like. I'm used to like stealing sheep from uh, farmers, you know. Yes. This is all a bit over my head too, but here we it's are. A lot. <laughs> Zoga has um, all of a sudden got access to Google via Lavellis's arm. Yeah, I'm putting that intelligence to work. <laughs> Romaina, what's a clock? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that we'll we'll. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe. Do Demelza, we want to hand her the orb? I, I, I'm going to show Demelza, her my hand. A Demel- Oh, Jesus, Demelza's like, oh, what? Then she looks like over her shoulder to see if the humans have noticed this. And she's like, she reaches out like to touch it, but she's just, it, 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 she's initially overwhelmed with concern. Like, are, are, oh, are, are nice. you, are you okay? Like, is this catching? Is it growing? Okay. Well, that's less nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, Cause it, she doesn't know that it's a, does she, she, does she actually try to reach out and like touch it? No, no, she, she no, it? no, but she's, she's, she's way. It's, I mean, imagine if, I mean, she's reacting exactly the way as if you showed her your arm and it was covered in gangrene. Right. She would be like, Which Oh my, Oh my God. Frankly, she's, you know, she yeah, doesn't yeah, say, Oh my God, but she, and, and she doesn't want to touch it. She's afraid. She doesn't know. She does not know that this is like an ancient elven artifact. It just looks like your arm fucking turned Ruby. And who knows how, who knows what's going to happen next. I I would probably um, I don't know I I would probably just say um, R- Romaina explain <sighs> yourself in brief and like have it explain that little backstory about Heart's End and etc. Uh, when you and, and she's her eyes go wide and her mouth goes slack as your arm. With like the palm of your hand has this blue light in it, and then your forearm and your upper arm have these little gold and white deep inside the red crystal. These gold and white lights that blink whenever it has to access its memory, and she's completely blown away. And when when you say kind of describe yourself, it's it's one of the only times Remainer speaks about itself in the first person. It's like it's it's it gives the, the speech about like end of Zen I, and I was like seven. I was. Uh, you know, I was heart's end made by this person to do this thing in this age, but I am that no more. Now I am what remains. And that Demelza is like, What the fuck? That doesn't say yeah, that, but that's her happened. reaction. I, so much has happened. Um, we don't need to like get into it, but just I just want you to know there's a robot arm in the mix. Um, but God. right now, <laughs> we're a little bit more interested in this. And I'm going to just go ahead and, like, hand her the Midnight Stone. I mean... She's going to touch it? I mean, she'll, 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 she'll take it if you hand it to her. <laughs> she'll, she'll take it if you hand it to her. It, she, it, obviously, it's um, heavier than she thought it was. Like, it, go, it sinks in her hands. And she's like, oh, shit. This thing is super heavy. But she doesn't know what to do with it. She's like, what does it do? We're not exactly sure. I'm going to start sort of reciting that, like, thing that the remainder said, but it's, like, just a couple of the big words, and, like, he realizes yeah. halfway through the sentence that he's just kind of saying manifold and... <laughs> Would man- you stop saying manifold, manifold please? Bridge. Yeah. He's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I have no idea. <laughs> well, um, the, I mean, the bad news is Demelza has no idea. She's a 
she's a, a jumped up hedge, hedge witch right she doesn't yeah she doesn't she this is way out of her depth <laughs> a jumped up hedge witch um while we're here real quick Romaina, uh what can you tell me about vartok core the elemental law master Ugh, vartok core who's what where did you hear that <laughs> that's not what he says that's what matt says <laughs> where did you hear that phrase where did you hear that name are you asking me? Yeah, yes, I don't remember. That's in the that's in the speech about the midnight stones. Oh, it is. That's the that's the guy who hypothesized that it's um, able to create a bridge. But I'm guessing, oh, based okay. on that response, that Remainer can't tell me a whole lot about Vartok. No, I mean he'll 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 tell the Remainer will tell you what Remainer knows about Vartok Gore, whoever that was. No, Remainer says Remainer Remainer the blue light li- lights up and your arm blinks. It always it always whenever you ask it stuff about things that aren't immediately present and it has to it has to go access its memory banks it, it blinks and takes a second it says uh, <clears throat> Vartok Kor, born elemental 1327 died elemental 2029 widely considered the greatest smith of his epoch the epoch of the golden thanes Kor developed several new techniques for building operational simulacra his engines built the great halls of Kalas Mithril and the skies were filled with skyships that captained themselves Kor was an artist as well as an engineer working in metals for his sculptures and developing new techniques for impregnating ceramics with precious gems and metals for his frescoes his fluid elongated depictions of elementals were at the time revolutionary but quickly became popular during his life the style fell out of favor shortly after he died contemporaneous critics wrote that the style was so personal and so closely associated with the artist that even though many artists adopted his style in many mediums once the legendary smith and artisan was dead elemental culture sought to honor him by burying the style he created with him core was a member of several artisan guilds and secret societies in his life he was considered the greatest mechanist and engineer of the age but in the epochs after his death the discovery of his personal writings revealed core to be one of the greatest lore masters of the age he was always seeking greater arcane knowledge, never knowing what power might be unlocked that could be tamed and harnessed to power his mighty creations. Well, that's nice. Dale enjoyed that. Lavellus might be a little bit like, well, I thought that that would be more helpful. Um, (laughs) It's it's like an encyclopedia entry, so (laughs) it's just what you would learn. Luke is going to try and kind of steer it back to something a little more actionable and be like, hey, I think (laughs) think that part about Making a <laughs> making a manifold bridge is kind of what we need to do here. Because mm-hmm. like I, I get the impression that if we stick around, like sooner or later, a gang of hobgoblin, a gang of excuse me, a bang of a bang of gob gobnoblins. <laughs> a uh, a hob of gang noblins is going to show up. Tom, Tom Tom figured we'd be done by now, and he timed the edibles to kick in right about now. Oh yeah. Uh, gang of hobgoblins. Yeah, I think it's reasonable to uh, expect that that, especially since you guys are carrying around one of the midnight stones, that the hobgoblins are not just yeah, going to like ignore you guys. They're they're looking for us bad. Uh, we know that if we continue on our current, you know, path, the the plan as it was before, which is to head south into you know out of the road, um, by the most direct route, we're going to basically just run right into them if we try and do that. So. I think we need to take our chances in dusk, right? You know? And Zoga looks directly into the camera and the credits roll. <laughs> we need to take our chances in dusk. Do, 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 Yeah. Um, <laughs> the market. Well, I mean, there's, I mean, the, the remainder has already told you what, what needs to be done. Now it's just doing yeah. it. And uh, there's some yep. discussion about who should attune to the orb. And it should probably be whoever has the highest wisdom because that's kind of what you use to, oh, really? to fight other people trying to see where you are. So Yay! if somebody with low wisdom attunes to it, then it's going to be real easy for the hobgoblins to find you all. Ooh. I could um, just, I, if they try to find us, I could, with my strength, just crush it with my hands. Yeah. And they would not be able to find yeah. us. Yeah, how do you like your midnight stone now? Just pulverize to dust. Yeah. Um, Bloat in their <laughs> eyeballs later. Okay, I don't mean to assume here, but do I have higher <laughs> wisdom? <laughs> you do. You have a, you, the, the highest. Do we have with my 20? Um, you're, an, you're an invoker. You have, a, you, have a, you have a 20 wisdom. <laughs> It's Surprisingly, right. you are the wisest of this group. 
I don't act like it sometimes. Um, yeah, all right. Well, I guess I'm going to go sit down and meditate with it for a while. You are going to go wow. literally contemplate your orb. Yeah, I'm going to go contemplate that my orb. Again. No one has more literally contemplated an orb than, than Lovellis is doing right now. <laughs> if anyone asks where I'm going, say that I've gone hunting. <laughs> She's <laughs> contemplating her orb. <laughs> sit what? over here somewhere. <laughs> out of <Well>, sight. <laughs> Dear Orb, I like you. Do you like me? Yes, no. Um, Dear Orb, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so yeah, the people are uh, very happy to celebrate. Vanazor and co. are kind of greasing, socially greasing the wheels, and... Um, it's this. It's like the scene at the end of Return of the Jedi when all the Ewoks all sing their gibberish song, and uh, an hour an hour goes by, and you feel called very yep, nub, nub. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Actually, I think in our case, it's probably called. What did you call them? Hobba gubbas? Uh, gob hoblins. Gob, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gob hoblins. The the hobba gubba gubba hoblins. So yeah, an hour later, uh, a a, a well tuned Lavellus emerges. Well, I am well tuned. <laughs> you're as you're you're totally you're totally in tune with this orb. What's up, guys? I'm totally tuned with this orb. What now? Well, I feel like I, I like you know maybe the best thing to do is just to tell them, right? Hey, everybody! We've, hey, everybody! We got some in, we got some good news and some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that's what we, we need to pull a good news bad news with these people like that's you know rip rip the band-aid off <coughs> by the way is, is, I, no, uh, okay, I think we gotta do some Just experimenting before, that out we, a suggestion. before we tell the humans we gotta do some experimenting we talked about um, seeing whether the elves could create a bridge and go through we wanted to see whether be able to come through but we were looking at Zoga right. when we said that um, because we You're don't right. no, wanna this is good. yeah I was all the uh, when when Ko says and Vanazor started a fire, all the all the um, villagers kind of gasp and they all almost all of them as one point south and up in the air. Oh, uh, so uh, I, oh. It. I mean, oh. you can you, you can see it. It is still burning. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, there is a oh, what's that? Nice. Put it out there. Th there is a huge column of black smoke that rises up in the air to the south. And actually, Good. the the sun where you are is a little tiny bit blotted out. There's a haze. The haze of the smoke it kind of it gets to a certain. It's a pillar up to a certain altitude, and then it spreads out. And even miles north, uh, it still is in the air. Yeah, we should go to a different dimension real quick. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very that's a very hitchhiker's guide thing to say. Man, this dimension sucks. <laughs> This dimension's the bullshit. Air, Let's go hang out at the different air one. Air quality here isn't very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I spent the year dead for tax reasons. Um, <laughs> sweet. Uh, okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. So. My, so. Um, through, through my orbular ponderances. <laughs> orbular. Um, <laughs> or, or, orbular. Right. Do I think I have an idea of how I would open a, a an intramanifold bridge? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Let's, let's, it's super let's super easy, barely an inconvenience. You'll come come join. Yeah, Here's the thing, you you uh, you know, it's not like it's not like you've got well, a transistor radio with buttons on it, and you're just pushing buttons trying to figure out what it does. Attuning to the orb, you're just like projecting your awareness into the stone, and as you do so over the course of the hour, you start to just understand what it can do in a way that it, that language cannot really account for. So you like, you know how to do this. You know what mental action is necessary to create this bridge, but you wouldn't be able to describe to somebody else how it works or how you do right. it. You just know. And actually what it, the, the, you have this sense, it's very physical and almost muscular. You have this sense that if you took this orb and you pushed it down and you, not with your hands, but with your mind, that the, the a passageway would open up. Okay, let's give it a go, shall we? Everybody yeah. uh, willing to to travel to dusk right now as an experiment? Say aye. Um, so let me hang on one second. Mm. Are you are you are you heading out? 
Co. I saw you. Oh yeah, if, if she's going at dusk, like I I I have to be there. The person that helped bring me back from the dead is there. And I, I wouldn't let Lavellas go alone. I think like as soon as like Co sees them starting to experiment with this, like he would just drop whatever he's talking to and just and just walk over there. <laughs> Just stops I'll, mid-sentence. I'll let the humans yeah. know. Keep, keep drinking. Enjoy yourselves. I must talk to, yeah. talk to my friends. Talk to my friends for a little bit. So when oh, oh, rejoice, yeah. when Lavella says, "Hey, we're just going to go into dusk for a minute," Ooh, for the first thing. for the first time, Remainer volunteers information. What the hell? The intermanifold solution cannot be destroyed once it is created. Ooh. So there's no closing Excuse the portal me? once it's open. <laughs> what does that mean? But I but but it deteriorates over time, right? It naturally decays over the course of and then it uses some uses some language about how the mass of the the mass of the stone determines how long the bridge lasts. Um <clears throat> and so it's not like you can just turn it on and turn it off when you when you want. Once you turn it on, uh, you're 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 in for a ride, and it takes a little bit. Like I don't know who the smartest person in the party is, but um. It takes so you have to uh, every time Remainer talks, it's using this very arcane, ancient, elven sage language, which I translate as science. <clears throat> but it means that like it's going to be about twenty four hours. Once you turn this okay. thing on, once you turn this thing on, the roller coaster starts, and you don't get off for about twenty four hours. Oh, okay, and you can't and you, right. you can't make it. You can't extend that, right? You'd have to as you'd have to wait for it to. You'd have to wait for it to. In other words, it will naturally bring you back to this world, right? It, and it just, you'll get to spend 24 hours in dusk. And you can do it again after that, but you're going to have to wait a day for it to recharge. Okay. Okay. When you say so, 24 hours in dusk, do you mean 24 hours in dusk time or 24 hours in our time? Remainer says, I answer as I was made. What does that mean? Dusk? Well, look at that. Okay. We spent the day in dusk well. time. <laughs> I mean, we're that means we spend a day in dust time. But a day in dust time is like. It could be no, this is good. Here. This is good for us. A day in dust time means that we can get across. We could probably get across, you know, the rest of this woad. By the time this wears off, we'll be we'll be down in in fucking Are Bedigar. We three days from the border. Yeah, we're a few days away. Yep. Well, we'll um, at least be way that we'll be a lot further away than they think we are. There's no way. Yeah. Further, the, the, what, what Remainer means when he says "I answer as I was made" is like I don't know how to. I, he, what he's saying is I don't know how to translate what I know into the language you people speak. It uses f- mathematical formulae that are beyond any of your characters, and so it's like shit. I don't well, know. Sure. I don't know how to make this work. It, <laughs> it, it, there's no way to get a. In other words, there's no way to get a precise answer out of this thing regarding how how like okay. how, how what's the what's the when you mean 24 hours in this universe or that universe? And it's like, look, this is how the math works. You figure it out. Right. Well, that doesn't help. Remainer, thank you. Uh, you know, how far, how, 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 what distance it would be traveling? Remainer's like, uh, also probably like, look, man, time's made up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's, it's, it's doing, it's doing its best. It is. Um, yeah. That, like, magic chalk that we have, how long does that last for? Is that a 24 hour thing? Um, I think it might be like, until I dispel it. Let me look. Yeah, I thought it might have been permanent, but I could be wrong. Inventory eternal chalk. It sounds forever. <laughs> that sounds, <laughs> that marks sounds left foreverish. Chalk grow bleep, glow bleep. Oh my god. They, glow. <laughs> they fucking glow for a bit. They, they blow gleefully. Remaining, <laughs> remaining in place to guide you until you choose to erase them. So I'll probably like draw a heart around all of our names on a tree here and never erase them. Aww. Before we go. Aww. That's really Cute. sweet. Um, can I just double check so we don't end up in an awkward situation? Hey, Remainer, when <laughs> we return to Manifold One, uh, will it return us to the spot that we left? Nope. Great. Thanks. I just wanted to be sure. It, it talks about how all all um, all translation is indexed. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, well, I'm looking to. I'm I'm just the one with the orb. All right, this is on Vanazor and Zoga from my perspective at this point to decide whether we all 
Demelza says, I Rescue think it means, her. I think it means that there is, I think it means there, and she's kind of working it out, right? Like, this is sort of above her pay grade, but she's smarter than the average bear. I think it means that, like, there's a, what, what, what uh, that time is going to pass differently, but that is always going to be the same. And that distance is always going to work differently, but it's always the same. Right. So that however so far... because we're moving a physical distance in Dusk, we would also... Yeah. It, it, there, it would there's, index that. There, yeah, there's, there's like, there's a, there's a constant that you multiply or divide. And that's how, that's how time passes differently. And that's how distances work differently. So you guys might move a short distance in Dusk. And that would translate into a, quite a long distance in Manifold 1. But it's mathematically predictable. It's just that it, it, Remainer doesn't know how to explain how to predict it. Right. Right, right, right. What's math? Yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> so our goal is to make two bridges, basically. One here, walk in dusk, and then make another one. Mm. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Go to dusk, I, try to I get through the wood, your... try to come out on the other side, right? Yeah, I, I expect that we're going to face resistance probably more elves than hobgoblins. Right, so what? what's the biggest threat to us? Like, you had... Uh, when you were in Dusk, I don't know, the Levetis, did, uh, did you encounter dust, dust, shadow elves then? I didn't encounter any shadow elves. Um, I was hunted by a... What did, what did Remainer call it? A, gr- a lesser something beast? A uh, lesser shadow beast, I shadow. think you called it. Lesser well, then, shadow by, beast. Based on your experience in Dusk, which do you think is the safest passage? Well, what's a greater threat? Like the yeah. hobgoblins, like are are probably tracking us. That's back it, here right? I, as I we think, speak. Yeah, I think it's probably just as dangerous, but it, it's we we're kind of coming in with more of a clean slate. We have the element of surprise. And well, what could be more apart surprising? From that one Sorry. dude that we kidnapped a while ago, but. You know, after the Griffin. Yeah, that's right. That guy's. We're yeah, not, we're not yeah. alone, though, right? We're or we're talking about bringing the humans. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't yeah. promise that that it's going to be the same as it was when I was there, but I just I I feel in my gut that going through dusk is the way to do this. God, the humans are going to run off, eat random shit. They're gonna get lost. <laughs> They're gonna, They're gonna fall go in drink things. that nectar and go super speed. <laughs> They're gonna fall in things. You know what humans are like. <laughs> <laughs> They're being, okay. If, if we, we're gonna do it, we've got to take them with. How do you like, say like, grab yeah. pieces of amphibian shit in Ko's language? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say grab in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, ahem. Well, you okay, guys, we, we you gotta, guys, just FYI, you guys don't know what. Yeah, no, 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 never mind. Continue. Don't know what. No. Nope. <laughs> what retainer? Nope. 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 Yeah, <laughs> that's, no. No, know? that's not fair. You can't. You can't ask retainer. Hey, <laughs> retainer, what, what was the dungeon master about to say? <laughs> oh no. Who um, made you? We Matthew gotta. <laughs> <laughs> I fight for the users. Sorry. Uh, anyway. Okay, we're going to have to probably fill in, like, Demelza first, right? And then get her input on how we fill in the humans? She's like, we're just going to have to tell them. She's like, this is, they're, they're you know, this is going to be, she shakes her head and she's like, there's no way they're going to understand what you're describing. So we might as well just rip the, whatever, whatever a medieval peasant version of rip the bandaid off is. She's like, you know. They they plunge. She looks around the world, and she's like, they they on their own, of their own accord, plunged into this stupid forest, heedless of the danger. So it, is this any different? She shrugs. Why don't we just lie to them? Suddenly, really like Demelza. <laughs> just. I think she probably just spent too much time alone with the humans after hanging out with people who are actually <laughs> capable. <laughs> Two days she's later, like, she's uh, like, Jesus, thank you so much for coming back and saving. This. Well, I mean, she's on. I mean, I mean, I think this is self-evident, but she's on your side. She's like, she's like the the baby version of you guys, right? She when she found out what these people I think were the doing. Baby she, version of us is Ann Polly. Well, I mean, she yeah. Ann Polly doesn't have like dope she's ass. Got a club. Warlock powers. <laughs> but yeah, so she's she's kind of an intermediary. Anyway, she's like, there's All no right. way, there's no way you could describe this to them in a way. She's like, look, it. it 
if you asked them if the, if if they were if they thought this was a good idea, they they wouldn't be able to. They would say no. They would be terrified, right? But then most of them would trust you. So why ask them? Let's just do it. Whatever it is, she waves at the black orb, and she says, "Whatever it is you're gonna do, we should just do it." Do we want to rest before we do this? Like a long rest. I mean, spend spend a night here. Yeah. I mean, I have got half of them drunk. <laughs> Yeah, they're ready. That's they're true. ready. Yeah, they're ready to. And they've and and now it's been long enough. It's been an hour. The smell of roast uh, meat and cooked roots. Some of you are going to find delicious. Another you are going to find disgusting. But it wafts across the clearing. Um, is there a way to like? So we can't close this portal once we open it. Um, it will just fade away on its own. So is there a way for us to like obscure? the entrance of the portals to prevent us from being followed by other things. And also, if we open this portal, can things that are inside Dusk now come out through the portal to, to our they side? Probably, but they're also doing that anyway. Hang on one second. That's true. The remainder answers you, Warren. I had one job on this stupid ship. <laughs> you, you know the other thing we talked about doing was that we can use the orb to spy on people or mm. other people and we talked about checking to see where the hobgoblins were that we trapped in the tower and if they've managed mm. to get out or not yeah. so we can actually see if they are on the way here and that that's will give a good us, idea that will give us a Let us, bit yeah. more info of what our urgency whether we need to go is. now like, or if yeah. we're going to spend the night or are they literally five minutes away so yeah. but I, I mean i don't know if you can just do that now you're attuned to it i don't know how that works but i mean we talked about trying to do that intra manifold bridge is topologically complete yep okay. once again <laughs> what the fuck does that mean <laughs> Demelza says, "Does it always does it always speak like that?" Secretary, non secretary, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Should we give it? A go? I'm trying to remember what Orin said to. Orin, Orin asked, "Like, does does this portal close behind us? Can other things come through here? Right? Does the portal stay open?" And it's and the remainder is basically saying, "I don't know what you're talking about. I don't understand." There's a there's a a difference between what the remainder thinks is going to happen and how you guys are imagining it, but it is unable right. to communicate that difference to you. I am beginning to imagine that we will just be there and that at the end of 24 hours we will not be there. Um, but I guess we'll find out, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, correct. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay. So then, all right, I don't know whether I want to be this close to the humans if I'm about to scry on other orb havers. <laughs> Pardon me, do you have an orb? <laughs> oh. All right. Um, no, I think that idea from Vanazor is good. I think that we should scry a little bit first to figure out if we got to go scry a little bit now or whether we got to... Okay, all right, all right. Just, I'm just backing off a little. <laughs> I'm just backing up. Just backing up. All right, who are you, just, who are you trying to scry on? Um, um, well, I, I don't know. How does this work? I think we were going to try to scry on the ones, the hobgoblins that were left in the tower. And like, okay, have they so gone you want to, you want to try to find us, or if they give. So up, you, I you have know. to scry. Let's take a look at the spell. You have to scry on someone else who has a. You have to. Well, I, well, yeah. It, you, correct. You, you have to. I think the way it works is you have to pick one of the orbs and then you decide to scry on that orb. And since you guys have only ever seen one orb and it's this one, right, then your options are somewhat limited. Um, what if I what if I put it on shuffle? <laughs> so the way it, what the fuck? Orby, Orby what is what is the lap. name of the spell that I'm thinking of? that I said is how this works. Oh, here it is, scrying, right. Um, you can see in here a particular creature you choose that's on the same plane of existence. The target has to make a wisdom save, which is modified by how well you know the target. So you're gonna make a, it's fourth edition, so you're gonna make a, a wisdom check, Lavellis. Oh my gosh. And um, you just have to, you, you can, you think of, you can either pick another orb, right? Like, 
you can either pick another orb, and you know those orbs exist, but you've never seen any of them, so you would be at a penalty, right? Or you could pick another character, and if it's oh. a if it's a character that you have never met but you know exists, you'd be at a penalty. If it's somebody like the Flail of Yonrog, well, you you met that character, right? So you could you could scry on her pretty easily, but it's still a role. Basically, what we want to do, right? Does it's- that make sense? By the way, does what do I just say? Yes. It made sense to me, yeah, yeah. but I don't know if I yeah. communicated it well. Yeah, it's the flail of Yongrod. That's they were in the tower, right? And they were the uh, one leading, leading everyone in the tower. Yes. So if they're out, then. Uh, but he doesn't have an orb because we've got his orb. Right, but we can still spy on him. Is that true? Yeah. That... That's how. That's, okay, that's, you can either oh, pick. You can either pick that. another orb or a person. Right, and the more familiar you are with the thing you're throwing on, the harder it is for them to resist, but it's still possible to fail. Yeah, because our only real options if we're trying to, like, pick a person are Flail of Yonrog or yeah. the other Bloodlord, Blood, Lord, Blood, Blood, Lord, Blood Lord, Lord, what's his face, yeah. Do we go Flail of Yonrog? <laughs> yeah, I what think we if, do? if we go for them, then we get good ideas where they are. You know, yeah, are they and they're the, the closest tower? to us. And if they're on their way, then we're like, okay... If they get here, it's bad news, right? So, um, so this is just a straight wisdom yep. check. Yep. Okay. Okay. Should I do it in the tower? Yes. Oh god. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Well, let me go grab um, a genome. Like the, use of the word genome. "wow." Well, it was exactly wow. in the range of I don't know. It's wow, not, wow! Wow! It's wow! Not, wow! 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 Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, it's not, um, it, you didn't obviously fail, and I don't think you obviously succeeded. Um, okay. Ooh, wow, no, you, yeah. So you, um, you... Why did the wow get more intense? Well, because I was really surprised at how, like, like, sort of, pre- I mean... It, Does it turn it, out the flail of Yonrog Dale, has Dale, really high d- wisdom? Well, yeah, that, that that should not, if you thought about it, right? The flail of Yonrog is a cleric. Clerics have high He's wisdom. He's like a priesty guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I should have picked one of the Archer minions. <laughs> so you um, project your mind into the orb, and you concentrate on the fleeting image you add of the flail of Yonrog, and you have a brief glimpse of the like you're you're up in the air above the flail of Yonrog, who's looking away from you. So you're looking down at the flail of Yonrog, and you're seeing her back. And she's standing in front of a table. The table has a map on it. The map has all sorts of like, you know, markings and drawings on it and everything. And there are other hobgoblins in the room, but they're kind of indistinct. They're at the edges of of your vision. And the flail of Yonrog is like rolling up the map. And that's all you see before the flail of Yonrog like very quickly turns over her shoulder and looks right at you. And the image blinks out. I'm glad I walked away from the humans. Oh. Did it? Did it look like they were still in the tower? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they are in the tower. No, no, they're, <laughs> they're either still. I would just like to remind the DM that I specifically said that I was going somewhere where it would not give away where we were. I'm just reminding. What do you mean? What do you mean? Give away where you were? What do you mean? I just mean that I, you know, went up against a rock or something, like away from the human, up against a rock. I just wanted to make sure that I was in a place that if something like this happened, that you couldn't tell by the vision of me. No, I, you don't get a sense. You, you, you don't get a sense that the flail of Yonrog saw you. The flail of Yonrog was just was oh, like was just aware that someone was watching, and right. and hardened her mind against it, kind of like Professor. Did I X. see anything on the map? Mm, that would be that would have been cool though, but you only you didn't roll that high. Sorry. Oh, damn. You could have gone in there and grabbed right. that map. That might have been cool, but no, never mind. I I you know <laughs> let I tell yeah, the okay, group all okay. that and um, put it to them. What do we reckon? How urgent do you reckon it is that we get going? I mean, they're still in the tower, and we still know the that tower. the tower is something we had. We made it hard for them to get out, but how hard I don't know. Uh, I think that hard. No, they are a pretty decent group, right? They're going to probably work out and get out of there fairly quick. But they obviously haven't come straight after us. Um, it's true. They're, they're not on the way here. They're, I mean, who knows? They're looking at a map. They're planning something. They're looking where they 
that's hard to know, isn't it? What they were looking at, whether they're going to wait for a bit and then come after us, or that was like them literally like going, "Oh, this is where they probably came from. Let's go," because <laughs> she said yeah. she rolled up a map, right? Um, did you, when you scry on them, you don't hear them; you just see them. Or, or did Lavellis hear anything? No, no audio. No audio. No. Okay. It's not clear that they were talking. Okay. So the fact that they have one of these things too, I'm presuming that they would also have the ability to do the attuning thing, and then also we like it. we took it off. Of, this is their all. We've oh, got the orb. Oh, yeah. this we're not facetiming them. Okay, got it. Nope. No, you have you have blood drinker Vrin's orb. There are yeah. seven or six others. Right. For some reason one I is they installed like somewhere. One. Yeah. Because the sunstone, the black sunstone, was too big to be a. Right, and that's the and you know and you know the, that that uh, blood lord Vorax has the the sunstone. Because you <laughs> saw him, you saw him seeing yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we've got to decide: do we spend do the, we night stay here? the night here? We have or do a we long rest now? and get ourselves prepared for dusk that way, or do we think we don't have enough time? Um, I think we should how, roll for it. How far is it? Like we would know. Like how far is it to travel from the tower to where we are? Um, that's a good question. About a day, right? Yeah, because I think we were thinking of it being the first. I think it would take you guys oh. about a, about a day to get back there. It would take the townsfolk probably quite a lot longer, obviously, because they're not. All right. It was so easier for you guys to get back here than it was to get there originally because now you know where you're going and you know the terrain a little bit better. So that shaves that's it, shaves some time off. Well, then a day gives us, even if they were to set off now, right? It does give us some time probably to rest here if we know because we know that they're still in the tower. So I think, I think we can make the choice of if we want to have a good long rest here and prepare for our journey into dusk in the morning. All right. Would be my vote based on the information we have. Yeah, does it sound like we're drawing like the correct conclusion as far as timing goes on this map? I'm um, sorry, say that again. Not not what you just this said. Is, but what what is what Odie said? What is it? What, uh, that we have we have like the dis. Okay, so if we spend the night here, yeah. Uh, we, There's no we, way the hours. flail of Yonrog could get to where you guys are overnight. Right. Okay. Great. So we we, okay, we know that we we know that we're safe to. Uh, stay here for the night because they are still in the tower as we just saw so I think we're good we could do a long rest here <laughs> thanks for being uh, my own hand is sassing me <laughs> yeah. so we could do our long rest here and maybe we can even kind of if we want to kind of prep the humans for yeah what's that's gonna, a good what, idea what's give them time to the absorb morning. the information Right, and say, look, this is what's happening. Um, if, I mean, that's what I'm kind of <laughs> voting for. If everyone else is down, sounds good. Everyone say yay or nay. Yay. 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 All right, you guys spend the night. Um, you party with the humans. Yay. Uh, they're all they're all act, they're all acting like they're they're safe and home free. They've sort of forgotten. You know, they're not stupid. They're just, they've sort of forgotten that they're actually n not safe and home free, but they're like, you guys are back. That's what they had pinned all their hopes on was you folks coming back. And so they don't seem worried at all. Um, and they, they have no idea what you guys are <laughs> planning, really. Um, Demelza sort of tries to kind of break it to them in a, in a, as easy a way as possible. You hear her saying, well, we're going to try to take a shortcut. And they're like, oh, okay. All right. Do we want to cut to the next morning? Is there anything you guys want to do tonight? It's, um, you know, this is probably the most f festive the humans have been since you've met them. Because they feel like, hey, Even we're going home since now. since the lizards? They were so, they were party animals post lizards. Yeah, but they were still, <laughs> they were, they were still definitely like, we're in the middle of a dangerous forest. And they're acting like we're going to be home tomorrow. Right. Which is not true as far as you know, but it could be. Who knows? Like, I I don't know when this would happen, but um, at some point, 
I, I would try to give an explanation, but I want to sound like really mysterious and elfy. Oh, that's so cool. I don't know whether elves have an accent, but like whatever that may be, it gets stronger while she's talking, right? She's like, uh-huh. behold, the Midnight Stone. And she very specifically frames it as though it's the only one, right? The Midnight Stone. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's because I've been kind of ba- back on a uh, Dr. Cowboy Viking kick. But I sort of imagine the Woad Elves having a very um, Old Norse inflection to in their speech. Oh, you know? cool. Cool, cool. I like that. Um, um. I, don't think that's how the, I don't think that's how the High Elves talk. I'm gonna but it's up to, right, actually, right. it's up to... It's okay, cool. I also imagine like <laughs> the, you're. It, this is very witchy of you, right? Because you've got a cloak now that covers your arm, and you crouch on. <laughs> you crouch on top of this rock, and you're like, "Behold the the midnight stone." Exactly. Pull out that. No, I was going to say, I pull out that little bottle of twilight I have and unstopper it so that it gets dark. Jesus. No, um, no, no. I think we're good. I think we're witchy enough as I'm crouched on top of this mossy rock, um, and I'm going to be like, "Behold the midnight stone." Um, I have I have peered into its depth and unlocked its secrets. With it, I will transport us to another plane. And so I'll like tell them basically what's happening, but I'll use very dramatic language to do it. Um, they're they're pretty captivated by this largely because they have no idea what you're talking about right, right. So for them it's to, like you know, it's like you know it's like going to a, a Led Zeppelin laser light show I don't really understand these lyrics but this is a great show yeah yeah cool great <laughs> like this is actually kind of how they expect elves to behave so they're like yeah this is some this is some good mystic bullshit we're getting our <laughs> we're getting our money's worth all right well that's the you that that's a speech you give at night though right that's not like or do you give that speech just as you're about to use the orb? I I don't know either. I give it at night when we first are describing to them what the plan is. You know, the campfire is low and it's like, here's what we're going to do. Um, you know, I reemerge from the forest and I'm like, I have the wisdom of the ancients. Um, or alternatively, right before we leave the next day. But I think it's it's more like moody if I do it at night. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. They've all had a few drinks as well. Yeah. They get caught up in it. They're yeah. more likely to listen to me and not argue. When you're when I'm you're done cheering. giving your little speech, they're all kind of slack jawed and kind of like in just in awe. And then um, it, it, all as one, they all start chattering among themselves about what this means and whether or not they need to worry. And there's some concern among some of the more sober members of the of the tribe. But otherwise, the evening passes uneventfully. At dawn breaks. I feel like we should do something with them because not all of them are going to make it through this. Like, <laughs> certainly one of them is going to die. I mean, <laughs> they've already lost like 22. There were 22 or 12. There were 12 more of these guys when they came into the forest. They've already lost like 12 well, of their people. Oh, but, right. Some of them died before we got here. Yeah, only one or two of them have died since you guys showed up. But should we be training them? We give, Should we be A montage? them? Yeah, I mean, Demelza. Demelza is like, don't. I, her attitude. She expressed this earlier. She's like, I mean, yeah, I, I, what the, what kind of training are you going to give them? I mean, like, there, there's but no she, way. She's, she's like, like, I don't even really understand me. what the hell is about to happen, right? And she's like a third there's level witch. Very old people here. I think I we'd them. give like the same training you would give to like children before a field trip. Don't yep. put anything in your mouth you don't recognize. Stay in the line. That's reasonable. Like, yeah. Everybody has a buddy. Can we just add a caveat? Don't put anything in your mouth you don't recognize unless Lavella says to. Yeah, yes. some things may be glowing. Don't, I, don't touch them. I told them how to fight hobgoblins and uh, gnolls, so really they should be able to extrapolate from that and figure out, I mean, just any number of tactics from that point. You know. Memorize these two elves here. Trust only these two. Yeah, yeah. Are, uh, are, you, pointing at, are you pointing at you pointing at me as well? Yes. <laughs> I, I'm like looking around behind me, like like who, who who's the other elf? Who? Who's the, the other, other elf? There's a wait. There's a trustworthy elf. <laughs> Make like the worst face, and I point at myself in confusion. Me? Me? Like Orin? Orin elf? Um, a small boy that you are familiar with, uh, Zervanazor, who is uh, the young boy of the um, Oaks family, Will Oaks. 
kind of walks up to you and, and he's about the same age as Anne Polly and looks up at you and declaims and says, me mom said you can breathe fire, but I know she was just telling stories to make me feel better. Uh, I will. Your, your, your mother tells the truth. Nuh uh. I can breathe Nuh-uh. fire. No one can breathe fire. That's only in fairy stories. Um, is there like, uh, actually, no, I could just, I could just, uh, this is before we've rested, right? R- breathe it towards, I breathe fire towards the fire, so I'm not like burning anything new. It's just like, Bwah. Uh, like where I'm kind of standing, like maybe I take a step back and blow onto the fire. Will, will little the little boy has got like you know this brown to- tossel there. Um, when you breathe fire, he goes, "Oh, do it again! One more, one more!" more. You, oh, wait, 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 wait! I, that's that's an encounter power. I don't think you can do it again right away. Uh, well, I'm not. In, I'm not in an encounter. It's five minutes. All right, fine. He's like, I bet you can't do it again. I bet you can't. I bet you can't do it again. Ha! And he points and she goes, ha! You can't do it again! Ha ha ha! ha, ha. This kid's about to be left behind. <laughs> I'll, uh, I kind of like, I'll just face him a little bit. I'm going to breathe fire on you. And he kind of, he, he, he like, he, 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 I think he knows that you're playing with him. And then he, yeah. but he, but he, he pushes back and he's like, I knew you couldn't breathe fire again. Ha! I was right. <laughs> uh, uh, Maybe just like a little bit of smoke comes out of my nose. <laughs> so apart from uh, young Master Oaks tormenting Cervanazor, um, the evening passes uneventfully. The people start falling asleep pretty early because uh, you guys started on the ale in basically the middle of the afternoon. Started on the ale. That would have been a great time for the for the fucking Nolst of the the Nolster attack is right after you used your encounter power. Um, <laughs> all right, it's the next morning. What are you guys going to do? We get a long rest. I mean, you guys already didn't I already give you a long rest? No, no, you no. gave us a short rest. I think a long rest we get back some of our the extended surges. rest. There you go. Yep. Yeah. All your hit all points, right. all your hit points go back to normal. All your healing surges Whee! recover. Your daily powers reset. Everybody has one action point again. Um, <clears throat> We're gods again. Correct. You're unstoppable gods. <laughs> where, where are those? Let's go resurrect those gnolls and beat them again. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna. Um, you know, I'm assuming that the fire is, the fuck is out this? by now, but just yeah, you know, yeah. make sure that. The I mean, it's still kind of smoldering a little bit, um, but yeah. And 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 I don't by the time. I want to leave this here and let the forest catch fire. The only fires are the ones that we make. The some of the humans wake up early. Mostly the the older generation of humans wake up early, and they start packing the camp up so that by the time the ki- little kids wake up, everything's ready to go. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need. Oh my god! Loads. I just got it. It's it's just it's so upsetting, but also very funny. I'm still angry at. Oh my god, he's a rhinestone cowboy. That is still yeah, that upsetting. Is I'm still upset. Far. I, like that one. I I don't know if that's more upsetting or funny. <laughs> that just upsets me. But it's 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 certainly a lot of. It's upsetting. certainly more of something. Um, Sometimes there's a part you have of to laugh in order really to not cry. All right. I mean, do we want to do this? Yeah, everyone, everyone, gather round. We need to be within, however far it was said. It was it was ten squares diameter. Radius. Yep. All the people will. I mean, ten squares. Ten squares. It was, it was five square radius, ten square diameter. Yeah, is like so. Yeah, five five squares out is like here. So that actually, can I not? It's one of those. They have these, right? Well, I don't want to make a point. I guess I want to do. It's easy. It's easy to do. I don't know why I'm. I don't know why I'm going to all these. Wait, go. that's not five squares out. That is five squares out. That's One, five squares. Yeah. Three, there we go. So yeah, that's easy to do. So all the humans, all the humans will um, get in the area, and they're going to bring their horses with them because their horses have all their shit on it. I'm assuming once it's open, though, like, even if I'm not within the sphere, can I, like, walk into it and then go through? Mm, I don't know I don't whether know that that's you want to test works. that. Yeah. Yeah, I can leave you behind. <laughs> no, fine, fine, whatever. Uh, Demelza? 
Oh, where, oh, where's the Oh, she's, she's hanging out in the bushes. Oh, I can move her. Oh, right. oh, get in here. It's a bio break. <laughs> all right, Lavellus, what do you do? The all people right. are all like, like what? They're like, the ones who are holding the horses are like, well, which direction are we going? They're, they don't really understand what's about to happen. Down, down to Goblin Town. Down, down to Goblin to Town. <laughs> where there's a whip, yeah. psh, there's a way. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna do the thing you described. Press down on it with my mind. With my mind. All right. Well, something happens. The essence of my mind presses down on the essence of the orb. All right. So, um, Lavellus. Uh, in order to do this, by the way, you have to hold the orb with both hands. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So the people all the people all (laughs) gasp when Lavellus reveals her ruby arm, and you hear like uh, from from you know you hear Demelza sort of under breath go, well, (laughs) and um, a couple of things happen, team. Um, You get this feeling like you're in and like which which you as players have had before, but your characters probably have not, which is being like. in an elevator that's going down and you're like, your stomach starts to drop out a little bit. You, it feels like you're going literally physically down and the forest around you starts to, a, a mist starts to come up out of the grass and it's difficult to understand how you know this, but you are aware that like, if you weren't standing in this, area you wouldn't be able to see this mist even though the mist goes everywhere as far as you can see it and as the mist grows it seems like you're shrinking it seems like the world is getting larger but what becomes evident is the ground is coming up and you are going beneath it i need everybody to make a a, um i need everybody to make a perception check in the tower? In the tower? Uh, yeah, that would probably be best. Dang it. Damn, we should have left a message in chalk for the for the flail of Yonrog. See if this works. There we go. There's that thing where I still don't have a tower. Oh my god, that's right. I forgot about that. Can I roll this to you like as a whisper? You can just roll in the open. It's not the end of the world. Okay. Uh, let's see. You have the best tower. perception anyway, right? Uh, let's see. Who? Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely it's Ko. Ko. So unfortunately, I don't have a token for this, Ko, and I'm not going to take you into like a private chat or anything, even though you're the only person that notices this. But as, as you are all sinking into this mist and the ground is coming up and your feet, your ankles disappear into the ground and you're slowly, physically, the horses, all the people are all slowly sinking into the earth. You notice one of the trees at the edge of the clearing, it starts to like, um, twist and darken and blacken until it looks like it's a dead jet black tree where once was a beautiful growing living thing and out of the tree steps the shadow elf that you guys well I don't know if I don't know which shadow elf this is but one of the shadow elves emerges from the tree and it takes it takes the figure a second to understand what it's seeing and it runs to the clearing but you folks disappear into the astral sea before it can get there and you go beneath you go the last thing you see of this world is the shadow elf his cloak flaps off his head as he runs toward you and he's like reaching out uh with a deeply sinister look on his face but you are gone and you you, get wrecked loser (laughs) and you leave the mundane world and you are in a a cloudy mist fog you have a a, a distinct sense of motion but it's difficult to gauge how fast you're moving if indeed speed has any meaning in this medium because you can't see anything to 
gauge your motion from. The mist occasionally parts, and when it does, you catch glimpses of of activity. And at one point, the mist parts quite dramatically and reveals what looks like a starscape. And it looks like a there's a, a sailing ship that is moving through the astral sea. It looks like it's made, it's a huge structure, unlike anything any of you have ever seen before. And it looks like it's made out of sails. It's so huge. In fact, it looks a lot like this. Oh, and <laughs> y- y- your oh, your gaze is attracted to it because of flashes of light that you notice out of your peripheral vision. And when you turn to look at the lights, you see this giant ship. It's huge. And it's hard for you to even understand what is it we're looking at. And flying around it are these much smaller ships. And you realize that even though it appears to be a sailing ship and this appears to be some kind of sea, these other much smaller vessels are flying like in three dimensions. Like flies or like dragonflies <laughs> spinning around it. And there are these little tiny flashes of light. Like like um, probably Lovellus would key off of like like bioluminescence like stings, like insects stinging with some kind of bioluminescent attack. And then that too fades out and fades away and the mist comes back and the mist starts to, your sense of motion slows. You can see around you the people, you have the, the, you can see all the villagers are all here and they're all like marveling and some of them are, the children are hanging on to their parents and the parents are trying to like not show fear for the kids. And the older, the older folks are kind of like they're is like, it I, I, raining? Is it pouring? Is yeah, a hurricane a blowing? Is singing that on the way through. Um, there's no earthly way of knowing. <laughs> and the mist, uh, once again, the mist starts to part. And this time it's just dark. It's dark out there. You don't see stars anymore. But there are these little points of, there are little points of light. And Lovellus recognizes that there's some bioluminescence around. And the darkness, the, the mist disappears. And the darkness coalesces and takes shape. And you're in what appears to be a forest much like the one you just left. Except the lighting is completely different. The trees are dark black. Their leaves are this uh, a very unnatural dark color. And there's light but it's coming like from the horizon. It's not coming from a it's not coming from a sun that you can see and the light doesn't really penetrate the penetrate the forest that well. And now you're in the world of Equinox. And that's where we'll leave it. We'll pick this up next week. Whoa. Yeah, Welcome dude. to dusk. Yeah. Oh my god, this was so sick. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> what <laughs> when we when we went past the shadow elf. Yeah. I thought that I thought that's where we were going. That's what I thought too at first. No, he I just think, showed I think up. He showed up he where just we tracked were. us back there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the like fucker he, was in tree form. Yeah, he just got out yeah. of his stupid tree mobile and he was like, oh, I'm gonna kill these guys, and then he saw <laughs> us outsmarting him. And he was uh, like, me, <laughs> baby. I guess, I guess you could say that his uh his bark. On it. No. It's worse. Oh, no. no. Yeah. No. Justice. No. Jail for you, Justice. It. Jail for you for a thousand years. Yes. <laughs> One thousand years, nothing. <laughs> Holy crap. And now you're in you're in the world of Equinox, which uh, looks pretty much the same as it did when Blavellis was here. Okay. okay. It's got it. Looks like, a, looks like okay. a, a forest at night, but it's it's like um, it's weirdly darker. Whoa! Uh, so the shadow elf was like spying on us all that time. Well, what a creep! Like or he might have that. That could have been his own sort of subdimensional travel. We don't know. I don't. I don't. Did I get that sense? I mean, I think um, I think probably Lavellus knows what that was that you saw. That's a thing a lot of elves can do. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, tree, st- tree stride. Oh, oh. Yep. it's like a, it's like it's like fa- it's like face step, but for certain woad elves that you're familiar with, where you can just you can cover a lot of ground by moving from using trees as like teleport tree locations. Tree. But you've never seen it work like that before. You've never seen a tree corrupted by the use of that power. 
I hate that's that pretty guy. dope. That's like awesome villain shit right there. That's sick, mm -hmm. yeah. Hundred percent. Oh my gosh. Anyway, that, thanks for playing. Is that elf one that we've seen before? Go ahead and make a um oh, do I remember this check? Fuck. I suspect it's one that we the players <laughs> have seen before. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's, like I would say that's correct. I've read into multiple times. It's not, the, it's not an elf you've physically met before, but it is an elf that some of the players may have encountered in a work of fiction. Nope. You <laughs> can go, you don't know shit. Oh, Lord, they are coming. <laughs> this is sick. This is sick. We're so close to, like, can you not feel... The, the ramp up to the end of the story. I just, for the for for the people watching <laughs> in the future on YouTube, I just want to make the point that like, I uh, not that long ago I had no idea that this was going to happen, and that in point of fact it was it was you guys who came up with this idea. Hell yeah! Uh, when we stole the orb, it was before that. It was before you stole the orb. You guys talked about like once once you found out that Lavellis had been. I don't know if you remember this, but once you found out where Lavellis had been and what had happened to her, you guys talked about could we use Equinox? Could we travel through Equinox? Could we take the people through there and avoid all these hobgoblins? And I was like, holy fuck! I holy shit! I hadn't thought of that. Awesome. So. Hell even yeah. Way back, Hell even way yeah. back when, when we saw the first saw the Shadow Elves, right? And they were like, well, hang on. Anna's character could do that phase step thing. So I wonder if yeah. you can, like, pop in there, grab him, and pull him out of Equinox's <laughs> face. So we plussed out and saw that villain. I mean, you guys have... That this was a cool <laughs> moment. Right? It was one of the coolest <laughs> things. Yeah. Let's it's one, it another one of those things that, like, I, no one... When we started to play this game... Uh, no one, including me, had any idea that shit like that was going to happen. That's my favorite part. That's my favorite thing about D and D is that I don't know. I, I, I have uh, is when you, the players just take the shit that happens and start using those things like tools. Could we do this? Could we use this? And I'm like, oh fuck, that's cool. Yeah, oh that's that'd be neat. Hell yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm so excited. And when when you were describing what Romano was saying as being like. If like if you get on the roller coaster, you run it till it stops. I was like, I feel it. I feel the coming of the end. Well, <laughs> <It begins. laughs> um, yeah, I think I think actually we're not that far away from the end of book one of Dusk. Hell yeah! And um, wow, race to the finish line. This is the last leg. And yeah, so now you know. Now you understand what the remainder meant about how like it's not a literal bridge, right? It's it's um it's it's notional. Like you can't go back. There's not a portal you walk through. It's it's you're you physically moved from from one world to another. Bridge is just the closest yeah word in common that has anything yep. to do with what we just did. Anyway. I love this fucking... game. I love this game. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Oh, Thanks for playing, folks. I hope you had a good time. <laughs>